What's up, Internet? My name's Nerdy. And I'm Clarus. And this is The Nerdy. The Wordy. The Book Club. Season 3. Episode 3. 33. Like the club in Disney that we can't get into because we're not rich. Uh, is that what it is? Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it invite like only. it's like 56 or something, I don't know. Is it 33? I'm not wrong about that. Know. Good morning, everybody. Hi, How are you doing? Hello. Welcome to the book club. What's up, YouTube? What's up, Twitch? Today we're covering The Final Empire, chapters, well, no, we do this in parts. Part four to the end. Yes. Yeah. Which is also chapters, but I don't know, like, the numbers. <laughs> yeah, I think it's <laughs> chapter 28 to... Something. Per e epilogue. I know yes. it ends on epilogue. Ends on epilogue. That's usually how books go. Uh, crushing it. When you said season three, that threw me off. I was like, season three? Yeah. yeah. I guess this is season three of the book club. Yeah, because season one was Wheel of Time, and then yep. we had a short, like, mini season two that was mm -hmm. um, The Inheritance Cycle. Mm -hmm. And then we did a, a... Oh, no, shut up. <laughs> uh, and then we did... Now, yeah, we're on season three. Yeah. We're going to have to figure out... I don't know. <clears throat> yeah. We're going to have to figure oh, out... Oh, why? No. I know. Mute. Jesus. <laughs> All our tabs have sound on. How this dare. This looks awful. We have to turn this off. You don't like the restream bot? No, because you, you have to read so much information. Anyway, it doesn't, we'll talk about it later, but this just makes chat look terrible. Well... I don't know why stream people, does it that way. It makes no sense. Well, yeah, the way that they, like, do it isn't, like, my favorite, but I, I feel like then the people on Twitch get to see what YouTube's saying and YouTube gets to see what Twitch is saying. I get that, but this is unreadable. Like, I, I can't make heads or tails of what any of this information is it's just too much it's cluttered and bad okay uh anyway uh feedback sorry for you restream. restream your your bot <clears throat> just makes things look terrible yeah how dare you no anyway hi everybody welcome What's to up? the book club um we have a book no crimson of talk you guys don't look terrible <laughs> uh the it's it's just like how yeah anyway uh we have to have them open because uh we re uh, we affiliated reaffiliated the Twitch channel. So if you're watching Yay. on Twitch, you can now subscribe over there, I believe, or drop bees, I believe. Yeah. If you can't, please let me know because I did the thing, and if it's not working, I need to fix it. If you want to um, give us your Daddy Bezos allowance, we will accept it. <laughs> yes, if you'd like to use your Twitch Prime subscription here, uh, we'd greatly appreciate that for as long as they're gonna let you keep doing that because that might not go on for much longer. You know, what would be fun for book two is if we have like a little tiny silent alert. That tells us if there's like a super chat or like a sub. Oh, on screen. Well, yeah, because because it doesn't show up in here, right? It's like like the the memberships no. they, they don't show up here. So if we have like a little tiny thing on screen, if you want to get your name on screen when you subscribe, I think that'd be cute. All right, we'll work on it for next week. We'll crush it. Um, yeah, next week we no next week is a full book recap, yeah, but we'll try but we'll to work still on be it live for next week. And people can still um, subscribe. Yes, yes, they during can. during the recap. Yes, we are also taking off February tenth. Tenth? No, that's the Saturday. That's the Dragonlance, I think. And the ninth. What numbers? If Saturday's the tenth, then I promise you, yeah. Friday's okay, the ninth. it is the ninth. Yeah, because we are flying back from Denver on the ninth. Yeah, so, so we, we will be, be no unavailable. Book uh, we don't have the uh, we don't have the breakdown for Well of Ascension yet. So as soon as we have that, we'll have that to you all, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we'll oh. have all that information for you. Um, Having a break in the middle of the book is gonna suck. It's fine. I mean, we'll we've done it before. I know we have, but I I I am liking reading this book very much, and it's already hard to stop. <laughs> uh, this isn't what I want. Um, all right, Clarus. On Twitch. Oh, what? I don't know if you can sub on Twitch yet. Maybe it just hasn't like gone through. That's weird. So we'll I don't see. like that Twitch. Twitch, get your shit together. Seriously. Good morning, friends. How's everybody doing? Throw some. Uh, I don't know. Uh, throw an emoji in the chat for how you're feeling. <laughs> uh, Clarice, do you want to tell them who this podcast is brought to them by? Well, actually. Fun fact, this has never happened before, but this podcast is brought to you by MistyMountainGaming.com. What? Yeah. What does Misty Mountain Gaming do? Well, they sell things that um, help you uh, role play. And not, not the spicy role play. This is more, well, it, depending on how your table feels. Um, it's more like the, you never know. Some people are like, yeah, I like my D&D &D in the bedroom only. But, that, you know, you don't have to do that. You can go get some rocks and you can roll them and they have little numbers on them and they tell you how competent you are, basically. 
Um, they also have leather bags and like dice holders and, and towers and um, fun little goodies. So if you want goodies, go to MissyMountainGaming.com and use the code NerdyNightly15 for 15% off your order. Typical unhinged uh, promotional campaign here at the Nerdy Nightly. Uh, yeah. Am I wrong? Use your math rocks for D&D or, or the other stuff. Whatever you want. Uh, <laughs> Uh, before we get into the book today, uh, we Roll do hot. have to uh, send a huge thank you to someone who sent us a gift. Yeah, um, we didn't ask if we could, like, say their name. But, oh, that's true. And but then, you know what? We're going to, if they would like to... We're to, not going to say their name. Yes, but um, we had, it was after book So I'm not going to show you the book that they wrote, but they sent us the book that they wrote. Um, is there, yeah, yeah, yeah. We like cover. Uh, and, yeah, we're not trying to, like, out anybody, but we did get the most beautiful, heartwarming package i think yeah we've, mm-hmm. we've ever received on the channel it was immediately after book club on friday yeah we went to go pick up the mail um and there was a package from italy um from one of our incredible members um who wrote us this beautiful letter first of all wrote wrote us a beautiful letter to us and then also hand wrote <laughs> do you have the letter to, I mean, it's from not Matt and, to Aline. Oh, it yes, is. it's that part. Yeah, oh, yeah. it is, guys. We we we're, we're gonna have to frame this because someone hand wrote out the letter uh, from Matt to Elaine. Um, one of the letters. Your royal bloody pain in my back. We're bloody waiting here to talk to you, and we're getting angry's crossed out, perturbed. That means angry. Tom says you're a queen now, but I figure that changes nothing since you acted like a queen all the time anyway. They literally like did all of the cross outs yeah. and all of the scratch outs. The calligraphy like, they is perfectly beautiful. recreated Matt's letter to Elaine. Yeah. It's um it's incredibly special. Um they also sent us um uh their wheel of time placemats that were made <clears throat> handmade This one's yours. by their wife. Look at how freaking cool that is. Look at these. They hand their wife handmade these placemats for us for our dinner table. Wow, the white balance does not like that. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> um, but that's fine. We cool. like them. Uh, so just incredible gifts. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's some other stuff in there that's a little bit more personal that we're gonna um, keep it between us and them. Mm-hmm. But um, thank you. This this was yes. genuinely such a wonderful package to receive. Your letter was beautiful. I won't read it here. It made um, me but so beautiful, tear up. and um. <laughs> uh, this was such a gift. Thank you, thank, thank you. Yes. Um, we genuinely so appreciate this. Yeah, it, it means a lot. That was really special. <clears throat> yeah. Um, to receive. So, yes. You know who the you placement are. The placement make the stream angry, yeah. And uh, we know who you are. They're also, oh, they're, because I, I said it was from Italy, their book is in Italian, and so they actually, like, wrote out the first chapter of the They book translated the prologue for English us. Into English so that we could, um, we could read it. Anyways, thank you. It, uh, yes. It was incredibly special. <sighs> Anyways. We're doing a book club. What's she doing? She's Nothing. Just chat. I'm just thinking about this. I just yeah. I, I feel like it, it, it like is oppressive and makes me not want to be in this chat. I know it's not cute, but we'll have to figure something out. But it, it makes me not want to be like it makes me want to leave. Yeah. And that's not my goal here. Mm-hmm. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. This is the first time I've actually looked at it in Twitch, and I just I really hate it. Uh, anyway. Um, I should have checked that out earlier. The, uh, yeah, Clarus, we have now read a full Brando Sando Cosmere novel. One whole Brando. We have, we've, we've read, we've technically read four whole Brandos, but, well, I guess they weren't whole Brandos. They were, like, they were part part Brando. They were Sandos, but now we've read a Brando. (laughs) Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So now we've done the Brando Sando. Mm -hmm. Uh, how you feeling about Mistborn Era 1, Book 1, The Final Empire? Well, uh, this book is fucking great. (laughs) That's pretty great. I love this book. I love it so much. Um, I think it's incredible. Even though I was wrong, I was very wrong, and that's okay. Happy being wrong because I think what they did was uh, remarkable. Um, and so I, I am very happy. What about yeah. you? Um, yeah, I, I'm really happy as well. I, I think like the there are definitely some things in the latter half of the book that. Um, moved so quickly that I, I feel like they got lost a little bit. Uh, and I think that I, I wish some of it had taken a little bit more time. Mm. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about like the thing about the book that I don't think is my favorite um, as we go. But uh, on the whole, I'm, I'm really, really happy. I think that for, for a book written early in his career, I think that this one is really just a, a wonderful novel filled with 
particularly characters, um, particularly the characters that I, I really love, uh, yeah. who I think have done, who do incredible things in this book and who, you know, I just, as a group, you really fall for. I, I think that some of the reveals in this section are incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, and I like that I was right about everything. And that I fucking called it, and so that feels good. Yeah, um, I'm not happy about that, but it's fine. <laughs> How means Delovin? Del Thank you for ten membos. Thank you so much for giving ten memberships. Let's what? fucking go. Get some green in this chat. Get some green in this chat. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I think the. Um, Hell yeah. I, I I do. I think there are elements of this book that are just like they tickle me in a way that um, I like to be tickled. If that makes sense. <laughs> Sure. No, but you know, you know how like everybody's brain, like you know, we everyone, we we talk a lot about the subjectivity of art, right? Yeah. And yeah. people, I people, people accuse me of using the subjectivity of art argument to hate on things just because I don't like them, right? And they're like, no, this is a like Attack on Titan is objectively good. You're just a hater because you don't like it, right? No, no, but but I, no, I'm 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 not trying to call them out or anything. I'm saying that like this is an example of something where if this wasn't your cup of tea, I would understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I would totally get how this book wouldn't work for other people. It just is subjectively very much what I love about like fantasy writing. Yeah. And so, you know, like, I, I prefer this book to any Wheel of Time book now. Um, which is tough to say because I really do love Shadow Rising. Yeah, but, but the, yeah, the for me, like, the pacing of it is is better. I, I honestly like a lot of the characters more. Like, mm -hmm. like though, yeah, yeah, if, if we're talking, like, Shadow Rising book four, it has one of, I think, my favorite concepts in fantasy. Like, it has this really, like, cool, incredible, like, moment and, and, and sticking point to it. Mm-hmm. But this, I just really, like, I didn't want to stop. But And th there's a few reasons for that. The first one for me is that the, the characters feel like real people to me. Yeah. And even even at the best of Wheel of Time, there was a significant chunk of time where I was like, the some of the main characters feel like real people, but the characters around them feel, like, ridiculous at times. And this, this never really went that way. I, I felt very grounded in the humanity of the people in this book. Yeah. Um while also getting the action that I really love. And that's not me saying that this is an objectively better book than Shadow Rising. I have Shadow Rising on my, like, S tier of fantasy shelf, right? Yeah, absolutely. This book is just more for me than any of Wheel of Time is. And that, that yeah. and clearly, like, I fell off. I, I A lot of back half of Wheel of Time I didn't enjoy, and other people love. And that's not to say that either of us are right, right? Uh, so I just, I want, I want to preface that by saying that, because I, I think that, like, I'm going to be very complimentary of this book. Um, and... It, it's because like this is this is what I like. Yeah. Granted, I, I I think the prose could have been a little bit more complicated. I would have enjoyed a little bit more um, description and uh, maybe some more metaphor. And, and you know, it's very direct. Um, it's a it's a very like this is exactly what is happening kind of writing. Yeah. And you know, at times I, I do like a little bit of a grander prose, but um, for for what we get in this book, I think that it accomplishes its goals so successfully yeah what it yeah. is setting out to do it crashes out of the park right? yeah, yeah, yeah 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 and yeah, absolutely it's a home run for sure and embrace yeah. that embrace that is a metaphorical shelf <laughs> we don't have our books organized by tears yeah. i promise uh that would be absolutely chaotic we wouldn't find anything um yeah jo I, I, john I agree. john schmidt says uh miss to me is a video game in novel form i i get what you're saying there like mm. i it, the vibe of that makes a hundred percent sense yeah i i get that i get that mm -hmm. it it yeah i could see this as a video game a thousand percent it would be really fun the, the... yeah i would love it that like playing around with like all the different pushing and pulling mechanics for in a video game would be rad yeah and i, I just i think that like the Arkham Knight, like you're in one city and there's a lot to do in that one city kind of works perfectly for Luthadel. Mm -hmm. And like the keeps having, like the, the book is almost built for that, right? The, the keeps having sort of, there being the great house keeps and the lower house keeps that you can break into um, at different levels. Like you could even make it like the you game already... could be Kelsier up until the moment he meets um the, like, Kelsier running the jobs that he runs before he meets Finn. Oh, like, it's the prequel, yeah. yeah. Well, and um, you already have different kinds of enemies, right? You've got the different kinds of Alloancers. You've got the Haze Killers. Yeah. You know, like, there's, yeah, it, it kind of, 
It, it would be. It would honestly be perfect. I would love that. Yeah, and I mean, the Inquisitors are a great villain. Uh, you yeah. uh, you could also just do it outside of the world of Mistborn, and, or or do it as Mistborn Book One that mm-hmm. you know play as Vin and Kelsier, um, be able to change back and forth. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there's a way, there's a lot of ways this would be a very fun video game. I, I agree yeah. with that. Yeah. You know what I don't think would be a very good a live action thing. I think it'd be so tough. I think it'd be so hard Unless to get this right. Unless you had an unlimited budget. Yeah. Like, truly, I, 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 yeah. I really think it should be an anime. Yeah. I, th- I think, like, the best, the best like form of this. Like an style? I, I was going to go Cyberpunk Headrunners. Sh- okay, sure. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, because yeah. Cyberpunk Headrunners has <laughs> so much, like, in the sky stuff. That mm. looks really good. Yeah. I would take Arcane too, though. Yeah, I feel like I, whatever medium you can portray the mists in the best, mm-hmm. I think it's kind of what you have to... <laughs> Jeffrey <laughs> T, thank you for Jeffrey, that super chat. thank you so much. Uh, this felt heavily inspired by a book called Illusion by Paula Vl- Volsky. Mm-hmm. It was basically the Russian Revolution in a fantasy setting. That's interesting because I felt like this was heavily inspired by Star Wars and New Hope. Yeah. Yeah. With the final throne room scene from Star Wars, <laughs> The Return of the Jedi. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, look, it, it is, there's only so many ways to tell a story. <laughs> yeah. I, I, the, the, there was definitely a point, yeah. um, during, I think it was during the audiobook reactions this week's we did to chapter 34, where I was like, oh, this is Star Wars. <laughs> The Inquisitor well, in this scene is Darth Vader. He had and that's the Obi-Wan voice, Kenobi. He had the raspy voice in the audiobook. Well, but even some of the dialogue, I, oh, I, I should have, I, I don't have my iPad in the room, um, and I didn't highlight it, but th- there was one line where he's like, you will, fi- you will be, um, Palpatine has the line in the throne room in Return of the Jedi where he's like, I'm afraid you'll find your friends will be most unsuccessful or whatever, and it's like, I'm afraid I'll... you will find the base quite operational. Yeah, and it just yeah, was. Yeah, yeah. It seemed very, you know. There, there's there's some similarities there in in a fun way. I, I don't think that it like rips off in a way that um, I think is plagiarizing. I, it, it's no, more no, in no, a, no, no, no. the there's a, there are some plots the where the plot hits in this book lines up with the New Hope in a way that I find in, uh, entertaining. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just good storytelling, right? Yeah, it's fun. Um, yeah. But I think that it's why I was able to call the Kelsier stuff so thoroughly. I'm surprised that I was right about the Lord Ruler, given how Kelsier went out. Yeah, um, yeah. You were like, "Oh no, I'm not going to be right." Yeah, like, well, but um, yeah. I'm so mad, guys. I was so confident. Yeah. I was like, "I get this book. I get it, and I'm here for the ride, and I love it." And I was like, "Well, fuck me, I guess. Wrong, 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 wrong." You were very confident, and I, I was know. like, "No, Kelsier's dead." Yeah, I, I, yes, I. And he's yeah. gonna be a martyr. Like I called that I so hard. I know. I'm. I'm. I'm a little upset because I. I thought. I thought I was onto something. Mm-hmm. Like I was like, nah, guys. I. I get it, and uh, I don't. I don't. I don't get it. That's fine. Um, I still called the Aiel, so that I'm gonna just take <laughs> I still that. Still called the Aiel. I'm gonna take that to, <laughs> to, to my grave. I also was one who was like, oh, I think the book that they picked up is the the little. Ep- Graph thingies. You or did. Whatever. You called that. Yeah. I'll give you that one. Yeah, I did that. I'll take the small victories where I can get them. Agent Hydra, thank you for that super <laughs> Hydra, chat. Hydra, thank you. Uh, super psyched to get your opinion on one of my favorite books. Unfortunately, it's snowing and I'm low on food, so I need groceries before it gets too bad. Us too. We eat. do not have groceries. That's so. true. We got back yesterday, guys. Guys, we had a great couple days in Disney World. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much to the staff at Disney World for being awesome uh, mm-hmm. and sending us our AirPods back. I. Uh, Yep, I appreciate the work that you did to find those. Oopsie. Mm, our bad. <laughs> uh, but for now, it is time for chapter 26. I am growing so very tired. Um, as far as epigraphs go, this was the first one that I truly related to on like a deep, <laughs> like personal level. Uh-huh. You know, I just was like, oh yeah, I'm growing very tired too. Yeah. Yeah. Always and eternally. We're only going to get more tired. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, that's so fair. Uh, so, uh, they, the crew gathers. God, this feels like so fucking long ago. So much has happened in the reading well, since this and chapter. we reacted to all these chapters and such, too. So, it, like, the reading's been, like, kind of, like, split up. In a way that was fun. I want to say thank you to everyone who commissioned those chapter reactions. And, uh, we hope you enjoyed the freebie one as well, because, wowie. Yeah. That was wild. So the crew's hanging out at the thing, and then Lester Bornis comes in, and it's like, oh my god, they're killing people at the fountains. And then uh, they, they, they go watch, because you, you gotta go watch. You know what I mean? You gotta go, you gotta go pay respects. Press F to pay respects. 
I was not going to make a joke there, but you know that's a that's a choice that you made. That is a that's a weird time to make a joke. I can't not. It's the weirdest. I sorry. I say press F all the time. Oh no, I know that you do. I just was like talking about how you know it's sad that these slaves are being executed, we don't, we and don't you're do like, sad you know here. what? It's time for jokes. We don't time do for... sad. Only funny or horny. There are all, the two emotions. <laughs> The two genders. The two genders. <laughs> <laughs> Funny so, and horny. So, uh, yeah, so they, they do go watch, and we get this just absolutely horrific um, description of the heads being chopped into the fountains. Oh, yeah. So that the water coming out of the, being sprayed up is blood, and it just gets darker and darker red as more blood gets mixed into the fountain water. And, like, and I was like, wow, Brando, you are, yep, mm-hmm. And the, the, like, thudding of the bodies as Kelsey was, like, talking to them, I was like... yeah. What the fuck? It was so dark. Yeah, that was, uh, uh, Mm -hmm. yep. Uh, But this is uh, where the world kind of uh, starts to become a little bit mysterious Mm -hmm. for the first time since Vin's had it described to her. Because Vin has been told some universal truths about the world. If you burn copper, you can't feel shit. And... (laughs) Yeah, can't feel anything. uh, If you burn copper, uh, they can't feel you. And... Wait, if you burn... If you burn copper, you can't feel their shit. And if you burn copper, they can't feel your shit. It's the two things that copper does, right? Yeah, yeah, And so as the Lord Ruler, in his very tall black carriage, you look very confused. Sorry, I'm like, what does bronze do again? What's up? Sorry, I'm trying to keep them. Um, It doesn't matter. Keep going. Bronze is... So I didn't say anything. Let me... I'm I'm figuring it out in my head. All right, you figure that out. Uh, And uh, you... The, the the black carriage of the Lord Ruler is passing by. And Vin is like, I'm burning copper, but I can still feel his shit. And they're like, wait, that you shouldn't. That's not how that works. And she's like, I, I don't know what you want me to do. I don't know what you want me to say. Like, I, I, can, I can feel it. I, I'm not. I'm not. Fu-. And they're like, no, we're gaslighting you. You're lying. Well, they don't know. They're like, no, that's impossible. It's got to be something else. No, but the, but they're like no, it's it, they basically are like no, it's because you're an emotional woman. Don't don't worry about it. They do not say that. <laughs> oh kidding. my god, Fabu, thank you for the super. Clark is telling weird jokes in this economy. What? Um, no, no, they don't say that, but they do. Uh, they do basically say like no, you're just like remembering the depression that you felt before you started burning copper. Um, and she's like, nah, I d- don't know about that. <laughs> you're gonna put a so pin in that. They uh. They, 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 you know, this is coming on the heels of the army having been destroyed and the crew is all kind of like, uh, maybe we should, uh, like split up, go to different towns. The, this was a fun one, but it's time for this to be over. And in the imagery of Kelsier standing, uh, with the th- sound of the thudding of the ska bodies hitting the pavement, uh, and these visuals of bloody fountains spraying blood into the air, uh, he's like, maybe we should like not let this continue. And everyone's like, ah, oh, fuck yeah, you know what? That's that's probably you good. know what? That's you're probably right. a good point. And when you write, you write. When yeah. you write, you write. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and um, yeah, no, I think uh, I think that they're all kind of like, fuck, like we don't want to, but you know, yeah, yeah. And so they do. They, they they keep going with the job. Yeah. Chapter 27. I think I finally discovered why Rashek resents me so very much. He does not believe that an outsider such as myself, a foreigner, could possibly be the hero of ages. Bah, bah, bah. Well, and there's the, there's the big foreshadowing of the end of the book, eh, guys? <laughs> uh, in the epigraph for chapter 27. Uh, so uh, they... Um, they go back to uh, the meeting room and Sezed is like, yo, your brother wants to see you. And Kelsier's like, mist cloak up. And uh, him and Vin, what? Mist cloak up. Yeah, I he says it. it every time. Did you read the book? <laughs> he, Kelsier turns to Vin and goes, mist cloak up. I just, yeah, yeah. We talked about video games earlier. And so like you say that. And it's in the like, book. I'm just like imagining like a voiceover that's like Mortal Kombat. <laughs> mist cloaks. Time to mist out. <laughs> what is this? The Autobots? <laughs> wow. But I, I wasn't just gonna say Mist Cloaks missed out. Missed out. We it's missed time out. to miss out. We missed out. Is is not a good time. 
Um, Miss Pokes Assemble. No. Mm -mm. No. I don't like it. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, it's basically yeah. Miss Cloak up. Like I don't know why you're laughing at that. No, it's fine. I it's because Kelsier my brain. says it like eighty times in the book. Yeah, no, my my brain. Yeah, don't worry about it. It's just my brain. <laughs> um, yeah, Kelsier and Vin are gonna go. Uh, you know, see Marsh. Mm -hmm. Um, they're like chatting about the um, uh, was uh, no. Uh, they talk about Farukimi. Farukimi, Farukimi. Farukami. Um, gonna be very important later. Farukama. Um, and he's like, uh, yeah, there's, the, the gold is also another metal, but like, it's this weird. Don't worry about it. You can try it if you want. It's not great. <laughs> it's not great. We don't like it. That's why we don't do it. It's not useful. And so she burns gold and she sees past versions of herself. Yeah. Um, very cool. I like this idea that there's like four metals that have to do with time. And how that's gonna like how those are gonna come into play? If any of that is true, if if any of that's true, yeah. but like twelve is like a nice round number, you know what I mean? Yeah, but I don't buy that there's only twelve. There might be more because we no, we know that there's more. We do because yes, because later on when Vin gets caught by the car? Inquisitors, uh, Car, uh, he gives her a medal to burn that burns out all of her other medals. Yeah, but there's still f some that, that we only know of the four like time ones. Only two. We only we only know. Th so I, wait, I guess it would be three of them. So maybe that's like the last. Why one. would? But what would that have to do with time? It rewinds your stomach. So if you eat a cake and you're like, you know what? I don't want those calories. You can just burn the metal, and it's it will how alimenters stay thin. Yes, you gotta stay fit and trim. But sometimes you slip up, and you're like, I gotta have me some cake. You know what I mean? Oh my and god! And so they burn the, the it's metal. It's the tummy tea of the fucking the final tea. empire. It's a laxative, actually. Um, There's someone on the like Mistborn Instagram being like, "Are you burning your medals every time, every dinner? Don't forget." <laughs> Here in Luthadel, we only eat breakfast. After that, we swallow the food so that it looks like it, but then we burn the metals to rewind no, no. our stomachs. Here in Luthadel, we eat dessert first, and then we burn that out, and then we eat our protein. You know what I mean? That's so that so that stays. Uh, Scafandi, thank you for that super <laughs> chat. Uh, thank you for some great content. Thank you, thank you for, for watching. Here. Hell yeah. Saw, we, you make this possible. <laughs> um, wow. Uh, that is so, so funny. I love it. I would love that. The, yeah, this there's a diet metal. culture is going so far. God, Luthadel's a mess. <laughs> oh god. Yeah, and this is the other problem with the bot. Huh? Oh. That looks. Yeah. Oh, the emojis. Yeah, yeah they look rough work. over on Twitch. Um, we'll figure that out. We'll yeah. That out, uh, so then, uh, there. What was I saying? No, you're right. There might be more than twelve medals. Because there that, has to be more than twelve. Medals. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How many medals do you think there are? I don't know that we ever find out. Why? I think that all metals in the right percentage can be burned. Of books. Yeah, right. But I think that I think that what we're going to come to learn is uh -huh. that all metals can be burned in the right percentage or alloy. It's just that there are some that we haven't figured out how to burn them yet. Because or what they no do. one wants to die. Yeah, no, no. But actually, though, right? Like, I think that there's okay. an element of it where I think that it is going to be something related to that. Where, like, you, any metal can be burned as an alloy. You just have to get the percentages right. And until you get the percentages right, we just think that there's the ones that are easiest to How obtain. How many metals are there? A lot. There's a lot of alloys. Like, how many metals exist in our world? A lot. <laughs> but. Brandon's like, I can't make up one for everything. We're just going to pick some. <laughs> at least four metals more than five. At least. Minimum. Uh, and Bryce says, most of the periodic table is metals. Isn't that like 50? How many? Uh, guys, I looked at a periodic table in chemistry, and then I got a 38% in chemistry. So, um, so That's not 50. These it? are metals. Oh. It's a lot of metals. Yeah. Yeah. 66 naturally Actually, occurring. all of these are metals. 93. These you guys are, also are metals. all putting different numbers in the chat. Yeah. All of you are wrong. There's a lot of metals. And so I, okay. I believe that all of them can be burned. But 
most metals are too I either too fragile or too porous to be pure enough to burn or exist in a stomach. Like I think that allomancy, I think that I think the limitation on allomancy is the purity of the metals and the alloys, right? And if you can't create an a pure version of a metal because it's too porous, I think you wouldn't be able to burn it because you would be burning the metal and whatever is inside of it, right? Whatever it's like absorbed. Oh. Porous. So I yeah I, I do I think that I I, I I don't know I don't think that we're gonna find out that they're like I don't think in this series we're ever gonna have someone be like this is the definitive list of every single metal I think it's gonna be one of those things where like even in era two they're still trying to discover all of the m- things that were lost bef- from the ascension although they say that the the metals uh, the alamancy came from the ascension so I don't even know that might not be true they it just might be that nobody knows right that they've spent the last thousand years trying to figure it out but, but I was going to talk about this later but let's talk about it now so, one of sorry. the things that I yeah. love so much about this book uh-huh. is that the reason why the magic is as limited as it is mm-hmm. and why everyone is so sure of those limitations is fascism Right, right, yeah. and so the 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 limitations placed on Vin's abyss book come from the Lord Ruler's um, Lord the Lord Ruler's attempt to keep the population under his control. Oh, for sure. And so it's it's a sometimes the limitations on magic are like ah people just don't try stuff, and you're like, but why? Like Wheel of Time, like why don't the, why don't the I said I know how to do fucking everything? That you think that the, you They've think that the Browns for, yeah. who just sit in their towers with their books would just be trying shit because they'd be researchers and they, you know what I mean? Like that never worked yeah. for me because I was like, there's no one limiting them in what it, it, they're just told. And, and I'm like, people the, don't do what they're told. No humans exist like this. Well, but but also like you add in the danger element of you can get sick and die from burning metals that you don't understand. People don't care about that at all. Human beings, they don't. I'm so sorry to inform you of this, my love. Human beings will smoke things to see if it's drugs. <laughs> I'm not joking. How, how do you think we have all of these drugs? It's because there are dumb people who will okay. go, I okay, think that yes. might be a drug. Okay, but that is like one person in however many people. And only so many people can be Alamancers or Mistborn. So the, the, the odds of that happening, I feel like, are pretty low. Not at all. Not, no, they're high. The, the, the chances of people with superpowers trying to do dumb shit with their superpowers is a guarantee. But then is, they would die. Yes. People die doing dumb shit all the time. Why do you think Red Bull has an extreme sports division? Do you think Felix Baumgartner got on that fucking balloon up to space and was like, there's a 100% chance I'm going to live through this? No, he wanted to fucking prove something. Human beings are crazy like that. It's it's like a universal truth about our so species. So do you think book two is Vin going around to all the, like, Miss crazy... the Tide Pod Challenge? Exactly! <laughs> People ate fucking Tide Pods for content! Vin's, the next, book number two is Vin traveling the world to see who was dumb enough to try and burn random metals to find out what they do. I mean, it's like I, a, uh, I it's wouldn't a video be surprised. Game. It's a video game. I wouldn't be surprised. You have to go around and you have to collect all the different abilities to level up. Yeah. A skip Cat says, to be fair, Vin tries everything. Yeah. Some men show up to Vin and just start putting metal in her body and telling her to burn it. And she just trusts them. Well, she doesn't. Yeah, she you does. See, we see that she whole thing happen out. No, they, like, they hand her the vial and she's yeah. like, no, you drink it first. Yeah, but drinking and it and burning it, it aren't the same thing. Kelsey could have dr- poked it out, not having burnt it, and Vin would have never known. But it, it, it's not about burning it. Like, she doesn't know that it's burning it. He's like, he's like feel she, in th- your stomach for a source of power. Oh, like, 100%. <laughs> but, I, but my point is that if the danger in impure metals, the danger in impure metals has to be burning them, right? Because we consume impure metals constantly. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. it, it yeah. has to be in the burning of them. So Kelsier could have just drank poison that he doesn't burn so it doesn't kill him, and then he poops it out later. And she burns it and dies. Yeah, but it's she, possible. Was, she was suspicious to the point that would be reasonable for the amount of information that she has in that moment. Sure. I'm saying that most human beings are not that discerning and will do the crazier thing in order to become famous or rich. 
in the hopes that making that breakthrough, making that advancement will gain them notoriety Mm -hmm. to be the first person to burn lithium. And then suddenly they have electricity powers. You know what I mean? And then lead paint was discovered. And then, you know, Elon Musk says that he invented it, even though he didn't. He wasn't there when Tesla started. Jesus Christ. But I can't say that because he sued to be called the founder of Tesla. Nicholas Cardillo, thank you so much for that super chat. Message (laughs) deleted by Arzu Kashefapur. Um... (laughs) No spoilers, please, but thank you for the super chat. Um, Yeah, guys, if we don't have... Okay, because we need to go over this again, apparently. I see a lot of deleted messages in chat. If there are things from the future that we are not aware of, do not put them in the chat because we will get there eventually. This is this is the fun for us. We're like like fucking around trying to figure out how this works. And some of it's jokes, but some of it's serious. My my point my point in all of this, and, and this was just fun, because mm-hmm. I think that Mistborn does this very well, is the the overpowering fascism of the Lord Ruler. Uh-huh. Or I'm not even sure if it's really fascism at this point. Um but the, the, the dictatorship. dictatorship. Um, which is fascinating. It's complicated. At, sure. the, at this scale, it's complicated. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the way in which he's presenting information about what is possible with Alamancy is all correct. And so there's no reason for the society of Alamancers to believe that he is lying to them. Because there are... Because they can... F- feel and use everything that he is saying in the way that he is saying it. Mm -hmm. And so it is the way that you control a population. You tell them absolute truths and then you put limitations on the other absolute truths that you don't want them to know. But you say, I haven't lied to you about this. Here is an impure whatever metal you want to go with, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, this person died from that. I'm not lying to you guys. Mm -hmm. These are the ones you can burn safely. Here are the magic powers that you can have. Don't try other stuff. I've already tried it. I know how it works. This is what you can do. Yes. And 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 it isn't everything that they can do, right? Here's the thing. Alamancy didn't exist as far as we know until the Lord Ruler took over. So Alamancy might be his own construction. He might know exactly how it works in in totally in-depth detail, but he's dead. So nobody else will never know without uh, fucking around and finding out. Yeah, and so I just I appreciate I appreciate that he used the magic system not just for the fun action stuff, but also to world build the fascism, to world build the other side of the story. Yeah, right? yeah. I, 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 Brandon Sanderson is a very, very, very smart man who writes very good books. Is all I'm saying. Uh, uh, well, I, and I love that we can have these discussions about his magic system because it's not yes. just like more power. You know what I mean? Um, it's I, not just like I found I found clever. a dildo and now I have a new superpower. I have the red rod. I've got the white dildo. I will now kill the armies. I have little man statue. <laughs> <clears throat> the the other thing that I like which about is this fun in concept, but it's it's hard to have these kinds of discussions about it, which is what I find fun. Yeah, you know? uh, Dream Shake also says the magic system is also the economy. That is a good point. Yeah, the ATM being the economy is so fascinating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because you're really not safe without it. Mm-hmm. You can't be because Mistborns with you... ATM. Win. Yeah, if you're from a noble house, you have Unless, to have you know, a, a supply of ATM, and so you have to pay a certain amount to the Lord we Ruler, to... but you also pay taxes to him. What? Yeah, yeah, we need to afford it. We, we've done two chapters <laughs> in 40 minutes. Sorry, I, this is so <laughs> cool to me. I, I know, I, yeah. it's so cool, but this show can't be five hours because we do have to go somewhere. Um, chapter 28. Oh, the, did, did you have any thoughts about the gold and what it does? Before we move on. Not really. It, it, it shows you, like, other versions of you that could have happened. Do you think it's the multiverse? Um, no. No, because then you would... Hmm. No, because I think that we're going to see the multiverse of Cosmere, weirdly. Oh! Like, I think Cosmere is the multiverse. Because these books don't... Like, like, Stormlight doesn't take place on this planet, right? Really? As far as I know. Oh! I have no idea. My understanding of Cosmere is that the Cosmere is an interconnected galaxy of stories. Yeah. Oh, so... Oh. Huh. Okay. Maybe it's multiverse. I don't know. We'll have to read the other books we'll to know. We'll find out. Don't um, worry about it. I would love us. if Stormlight Archive was just the same story, but... <laughs> but in a multiverse? But a multiverse. That would be hilarious. Vin is the Lord Ruler. Oh, God. 
Yeah, that's it, sure. James makes a point that that's like a universe. That's not like the multiverse of like parallel worlds. That's just like different. I just mean that I don't think we're going to get into the mall. Like I don't think I don't that think, we're going there. I don't think we're getting into the multiverse either. But it would just kind of reminded me of that of like an alternate version of yourself. Yeah. You know, the multiverse seems like a really like big concept for what is essentially a like political drama with superpowers. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, are we going to yeah. have two Ellen DeGeneres's fucking <laughs> with their own Vins fighting Mistborn style? Like, Where did Ellen DeGeneres come from? Because his name is Ellen D. Ellen. And so I just call him <laughs> Ellen DeGeneres. Yeah, sure. I cannot be the only person who calls him Ellen DeGeneres. You might be. Uh, at Keep Lacal in this chapter. Uh, Vin is at her, uh, at a ball. It's not even the last ball. God, so much happens in these final two sections. <laughs> Um, Sandra Lange. Sa- yeah. Uh, Vin and Ellen are like... We need an emote for Sandra Lange. <laughs> That's actually very funny. It's just like his face sideways on a little Like mountain. falling down a mountain. <laughs> um, Blue Ellen versus Red Ellen. <laughs> That's very funny. <laughs> oh my god. Um, uh, so yeah, so he... Uh, Ellen is like trying to be like, Valette, you've got to get out of Luthadel. Shit's getting bad. And she's like, no, nah, I'm good, bro. Nice try, though. I mean, he's, like, kind of rude. He's like, it was fun. <laughs> no, that isn't even this one. Oh, it's not? No, that's oh, that what, that's that's the at the one. That's at the, um, that's at the fucking, hay, uh, the, the, the ball yeah, at, at right. his house. That's that fucking venture ball. Um, there's so many balls, guys. Just all the balls. All the balls. Um, Nicholas Cardillo, thank you for that super chat. Uh, message deleted by Arazuka Shepherd. <laughs> Yeah, anything that is not explicitly said in this book explicitly is Wait, is a spoiler. Did you just have two spoiler chats back to back get deleted? P- yeah, please, please, no, no hinting, no like. Y'all are wilding out today. What's going on? Yeah, Nicholas, we appreciate the super chat, but like no leading. Yeah. Um. All right. Uh. <laughs> okay. We'll so, get there eventually. Yeah. They're at the ball. The prince is having a ball. What? He is... No, he's not. He's not a prince. Uh, not, he's not a yet. fucking king. Not yet. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ellen, he basically is like, I need you to... Um, I need you to leave. He tells uh, Valette Vin that his family runs the Pit of Haste, the ha- of Hathson. Hathson. And they are the AT miners, which I, I don't feel like gets into enough in this book. Um, I was kind of hoping we would get into that, like, Ellen would find out how bad it was there. Because it is very strange to me that Ellen is the sympathetic nobleman. Yeah. Um, to the Ska. Mm-hmm. And his family run the worst nightmare for Ska possible. Maybe that's why he's sympathetic. Because he's like, this is so fucked up. He's like, sure, like I, I get it's a prison, but, like, what the hell? We can speculate that. I wish that there was some... I wish that we knew more about how he felt about the ATM mining beyond just my family runs it. And mm. I maybe I shouldn't have told you that. I like I, I think that for um for the like narrative of Ellen's arc, I would have liked to have known how he felt about that or if he didn't know. Cuz cuz at this point, I know that he knows that his family mines ATM. Mm-hmm. I don't know that he knows what that means. In a weird way. He knows the eco- economic part of it. Right. I don't know if he knows what it takes to mine ATM. And I just wish that I did. I wish that I knew what he knew about what... Because you're setting him up as the guy who's going to bring change. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. I, I, I just find it a little bit odd that I don't know what he knows about this thing in particular. Fair. That that's all I'm saying. Is is it was the only thing that I was kind of like, oh, I, I I would like to know how he feels about that beyond just how the scar treated in general. Yeah, how does yeah, he yeah. feel about the pits of Hathson? And why not have Vin confront him about that? Right. The the one the confrontation I wanted between them that we don't get because she doesn't go back to him as a misborn until the very very final moment. Yeah. 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 Is the I saw what your family's pits did to Kelsier. Mm-hmm. I saw the scars on his arms. I know what that means. Mm-hmm. How, like, that that confrontation never happens. Uh, it might happen in book two. I, I don't know. But um, it's it I mean, was just something I was really interested in. Yeah, it's I, I, I honestly think that it's going to come back in a way that is why, like, 
why Ellen maybe is the way that he is, and not because I think that Vin understands the world enough to know that like it's like he doesn't have any control over that and is not in charge of it and is not going to be like mad at him specifically for what happened there. Mm-hmm. But I, I think that it, like I would be really curious to see what Ellen's life experience is because we have yeah. an, we have an idea of it. Obviously, um, his dad sucks, right? His, his yeah. dad is the worst and. Yeah. And so if, yeah, Ellen went to visit the pits or, like, whatever it was, like, and how he how he felt about that, I think could be very interesting. Because he's definitely going to have to come back in further books as the king, right? Like It would be wild if he wasn't in the next book. Yeah. So I do hope that we get... My boyfriend died between books and I never saw him again. Well, I'm hoping... Honestly, what I really, really, really want yeah. is more Ellen POV of how he is going to lead these people without knowing them at all, not even realizing they're intelligent until he met Vin. You know, See, he has such a disconnect from the ska. I want to know how the fuck he's going to pull this off. See, I don't think he does. You don't think he does? No, I don't think that disconnect exists at all because I think that it was always fake. And I think I think that like the story of this is going to be realizing that the disconnect between the noble people and the ska was always a fictional line that doesn't exist. I mean, yeah. He it, also has Vin. He has Dachshund, right? I, I think that there, there's it's enough just hard to... ska. Like, there's enough people who have been good about organizing the ska yeah. in his camp now. It's it's, just, especially if Dachshund works for him. Dachshund will get those people working together, you know? It's just hard to unlearn 20-some years. I, I think he's 21. Like, um, or 19 or something. It's it's hard to unlearn 20 years of, like, essentially brainwashing. It's yeah, like, that's it, Like, if you compare it to, like, real life, like, some of the things that we do or have done throughout our lives might be racist without us like realizing it because it's how things were done and it was never talked about and Mm now now we are dismantling and unpacking and like kind of like lifting the curtain on those kind of things i think there's gonna be some like inherent prejudice in ellen that he's gonna have to figure out and realize how how much they've been lied to and how much they've been controlled and brainwashed and I'm just really excited to see that journey with him because I, I, I think that's going to be really fascinating. Yeah, no, I get that. Uh, Josh Timko, Josh, thank you for joining me for 17 table. months. I uh, haven't been able to catch a Cosmere Book Club live yet, but that's I'm excited okay. to watch after work. Hope you enjoyed your first annual Thank you for joining the Nargs. We appreciate we that. We appreciate it. It will be here probably forever until YouTube dies. Probably. <laughs> um, so uh, Ellen goes home uh, and he uh, goes to see his dad. Or he, he tries to go to bed. But his dad is like, I need to speak with you, boy. Mm-hmm. You're going to have lunch with the the Tagaz girl tomorrow. Uh, and we're going to form alliances so we can fight the Hastings. Because I, we're, we're going to war, I guess. We're going to war. No one's going to try and stop it. We're just doing it. Um, <laughs> and uh, then he goes into the other room. And his servant is like, yo, Jast is here. And he's like, what's up, Jast? And Jast is like, yo, you know Valette? Yeah. She's a liar. Also, we found a uh, thief headquarters. Um, and I was like, wow, okay. His spies are great. They're fucked. Like, yeah. there's no way that Jastas or uh, Ellen don't go to the Inquisitors about this. And then they don't. And I was like, you know what? Good on you guys. Yeah, yeah. Good for you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate also that Ellen does not like a... He doesn't seem, like, super impulsive. He's like, okay, I'm gonna, like... There's yeah. more to this. I'm clearly, like, missing a piece. I'm not going to, like, act on, like, half knowledge because that would be silly. Appreciate that. Yeah, I was kind of surprised Jastis didn't. I mean, he's but... he he doesn't seem to give a fuck. He's like, yeah, whatever Ellen does is fine. I'm, I will say this. For how little we see Ellen's friends, Ellen has great friends. You know what I mean? Like, Except for that one guy who's, uh, like... There, there was the one guy in the meeting who was kind of, seemed like kind of a prick, but that's but about it. kind of a prick, but has Ellen's back. Mm. 
like his boys are his boys. It's they like fight. Kelsier Look, and... I, I fight with my boys sometimes. You know, we we get into some arguments, but we still love each other. We sure. still have each other. If anyone else wanted to have that argument, I'd back up my boy, even if I don't agree with him. Yeah, because that's what your boys do. You only argue behind closed doors. Mm-hmm. That's just how it works. Mm-hmm. And uh, that I was impressed that like Jastis was like, I, I'm not gonna. I, Jastis didn't do it to turn them in. He's like, I don't really care. I only care about this situation because I'm worried about how it's going to impact you individually. Yeah. And, like, that is that is friendship. And he's like, only you would be, like, relieved that they're trying to only rob you. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I... I, I mean, I'd let Vin rob that me. That's great. Yeah. I can't say that. She's, like, 17. Um... I mean, no, I would, like, I would, like, take care of it. I would be like, do, yeah. you, do you need food? Like, yeah. yeah. Can I help? <laughs> the revolution! Um... Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would be in that room with them being like, guys, this is this weird. This is fucked up. I don't like any of this. Yeah, the Lord Ruler? I don't know about that guy. He seems mm, um, all right. questionable. He's so, uh, the next chapter, we get um, uh, something really fun. I, I love that uh, uh, Vin is reading the translations. Um, and we get the, the, the Vin using her brain here. To manipulate Seized into telling her about Farrakhemi. It's a bit heavy-handed. And about Seized how he's is... a Farrokhemo. Yeah. <laughs> Seized is like, I, you know what? You, that your uh, delivery could use some work. But <laughs> I see your point. Um, and, you know, she plays the like, well, God, like I wouldn't be very helpful if Farrakhemi came up and I just didn't understand it enough to know what I was reading. Damn, wouldn't that be so unfortunate if we missed it? Cause, so know. Vin is definitely part terrorist right? Yeah. She has to be. She has to be. It has to be the explanation for why her and the Lord Ruler are similar. Because it seems that only Terrasmen can be Farrakhemis. Now, that might also be wrong. That Because we don't know how Farrakhemi, like, um, manifests itself. We know that there's, like, a snap for Alamancy. Um, Garen, welcome to the nerd table. Jesus Christ. Thank you for being an arg. Yeah. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, we know that Allomancers have, like, a snap. Yeah. Maybe there are other people who are ferrochemists who aren't terrorismen, but, like, they have no idea how to access those powers? Like, it doesn't just happen? Because how would you accidentally put your strength into your ring? Especially if you don't own metal. Like, if you're too poor to have anything metal. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I I don't know I I she might it, from right now all we know is that Terrasmen can do ferrochemy but it may not just be Terrasmen because there's no way for people to like find out if they can do it or not. Or she's just a part or she's just part Terrasmen. Yeah, I'm just saying that maybe there's another explanation. What? Sure. Well, the terrorists get castrated. There's literally breeding. Sure, programs. but like every single human being on the planet has Genghis Khan's DNA in them. <laughs> That's really weird. I I I know, but like it's like. So you're saying she's related to the Lord Ruler? I mean, no. I well, but 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 maybe. Like we don't know that he doesn't have that he never had kids. They would have died right forever ago. So, yeah. I, I, look, all I'm saying is that a ferrochemist accidentally discovering their power feels like a much harder thing to do than alamancers. Especially when, like, if you're nobility, you can you have you wear metal and shit, but like none of the ska wear. Well, she had like an earring, but I don't know. I don't know. I just think that like maybe it's not just terrorismen. Yeah. Um, uh, Austin Armenia says one to five percent, depending on where you live. Yeah, we all we all got a little Genghis in us. Wait, what? That's crazy. Oh yeah, Genghis Khan fucked so many people in so many places that his DNA is just kind of in people. Oh god. I'm, yeah, it's weird, but it's it's just a thing. Just one of those, one of those things. Cool, love that for us. Uh, apparently, uh, Riven Hex says, I've got Farokamo in their head. You're welcome. Says at the Farokamo. 
Yeah, I don't know. I'm just saying there might be another explanation. But yeah, or she might just be part terrorism. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Uh, so then, uh, <laughs> I do love sometimes when I'm like, yeah, it's probably the like most obvious thing, and you're like, okay, but. But what but if what it's if not? It's, what if it's just that everything's a lie? Yeah, what if the Aiel were the Tinkers, okay? Uh, the, the, the fun part is that when you make those predictions that end up being right, it's great. And when you don't, it doesn't matter. The, yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter. We move on and we forget. Uh, speaking of moving on, uh, um, yeah, so uh, they, they're, the, they basically get a map from Marsh that has where all of these soothing stations are. And we kind of realize that the Lord Ruler is ruling Luthadel by having, like, secret CIA black sites where someone just sits and, like, affects people constantly. Yeah, you know when you go to pull up a Wi-Fi connection and it's, like, soothing station? That's what that is. Uh, you, you don't don't want to get off the network. I just love that this this specifically is a, like conspiracy theory about Wi-Fi and, like, about, like, broadband signals um, that they are being used to control our emotions and keep us docile to the American government. And so the fact that it is a part of this book actually was so funny to me Mm -hmm. because there was that element of it that's, like, um, you are legitimately just, like, oh, yeah, these conspiracy theories are true. Lo-fi elements, Oh, God, we need to change our uh, Wi-Fi. Lo-fi Alamancers? Uh, yeah, I, yeah. Should I d- we change our Wi-Fi to soothing station? No, because then if someone's driving by and they see it pop up, they're like, oh, that's Renardi and Clark's. <laughs> Fair. Although, you, well, no, actually ours is, ours is, it's nerdy, but. Yeah, there's other nerdy ones. Yeah. It's fine. My, um, my my Wi-Fi was the TARDIS for forever, and the password was Dr. Donna mine for, like, eight years Rex in New York. Mine was That's awful. Yeah. It was great. No, Nobody wait, that was the was. password? No. Oh, my God. I was like, you would make people type that in every time they came to your house? No. You're a monster. No, it was called Raxacorca Palpatorius. Right, the, uh, the word that Angela's writing. Um. <laughs> Legally distinct. Um... <laughs> Uh, and so we get uh, another conversation with Kelsier and Sezed about religions and how people need things to believe in in order to stand in revolution. That doesn't come back, though. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Very, not important at all. <laughs> at the Venture Ball, chapter 30. We get to the Venture Ball and we something's listen to weird. This. We, guys, if you want, if you're a YouTube member or a member of the Patreon, you can watch us react to this audiobook chapter. That is true. Courtesy of our zoo. <laughs> Thank you for commissioning that. It was a great chapter. Uh, we we get some awesome moments. We get Ellen, uh, you know, kicking Vin uh, out to the curb. Uh, we get Cliss revealing that she's a fucking, like, Bamf. big brain, intelligent spy lady yeah. uh, who is not a bimbo at all, yeah. but, like, plays the bimbo in order to get shit done. Because at this point, I was like, oh, like, Vin is pretty competent. You know what I mean? And then I was like, nah. She's such a baby. Yeah. Uh we get we get this like weird vibe where nobody's really talking. Uh and Sezed and Vin learn that it's because it is the final ball. Mm-hmm. Uh there will be no more balls. The, the, the Luthadel will be a eunuch from here on out. No balls. No balls. No balls. And uh so uh Vin, having never really formalized any agreements, um Oh, Giovanni Oro! Well, I guess we can say that's who the package is from. Giovanni, thank you so much for joining the NARGs. Welcome to the NARGs. And thank you for the package. It was um, such an incredible gift. Like, we're so, 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 so grateful. Yeah. Um, Yeah. That, like, that that really made our day. Since since Giovanni announced himself. Yes. uh, This is their book. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tra Macere e Ombre. I probably pronounced that wrong. Probably Um, better than I could have done. Um, it is uh, it's so beautiful. Thank you so much for yeah. this. I'm excited. To, I, I think I'm going to try and use Google Translate to read it. Yeah. Because you can just take, like, do it per page, right? Well, you can actually just, like, um, if you hold your phone over yeah. it. And I'll, I might just, like, try and read Scan it like it. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going yeah. to see Giovanni, but yeah. thank you for this. It you was an incredible gift. Thanks. If you do speak Italian, pick up Tramacere e Ombre wherever books are sold. Uh, Arazu, thank you for 10 gifted members. Arazu, thank you. Appreciate Hell, that. Yeah. 
Hell yeah. So much green in the chat. You're too kind. So much green. Hannah Only Green is now green. Green. Batman. Oh, whoa. Batman is green. Whoa, Batman. Guys, Batman is now a narg on our channel. <laughs> That's fucking rad. Um, uh, thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, yeah, the, at, they're at the ball. And shit feels weird because it's, yeah, gonna be the last ball. No more balls. Um, so, uh, Cliss, uh, notices that, uh, Vin is using her soothing on her. So Cliss is like, you're an alamancer. Ooh la la. Well, yeah, because Vin punches her in the face <clears throat> with it. Yeah. It's not subtle. And so now they have to pay off Cliss, uh, in order, <laughs> which, yeah, Vin... I understand why you tried it, but... Uh, You're indebted to her forever. Five ever. Mm, um, nope. <laughs> well, just for like a week. Oh, yeah, that's true. It doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't matter anymore. Um, also, Ellen. <coughs> Ellen is like, yeah, so that was fun, but gotta go be with my family. Yeah. Peace out, mother. I agree with Ellen here, by the way. You agree with him? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I... Oh. The battery Our level. Mouse is gonna die. Uh, no, I do agree with I, I agree with Ellen's actions here. I think that given the placement of House Renew and its relative lack of security, uh, and the uh, uh, oh, it's not even plugged in over there. Yeah. So given the placement of House Renew and its lack of security, and the target that is on House Venture, mm -hmm. I. Even even if he desperately loved her and wanted to protect her, he would be putting her whole family at risk by continuing this yeah. while the house war is going on. Yeah, oh, and for sure. And I, I think that he, he could have explained to, it better. Yes, he tries to do a mm -hmm. kind thing in a very yeah. unkind way. <laughs> but someone someone would kill Renu to get at him. Oh, for sure, absolutely. Because he's dating um, Renu's niece, right? Also, hi, Fariha. Do you want to tell Freeha about Smut Corner? Freeha! Wait, Freeha doesn't know about Smut Corner? She said, gasp, there's a Smut Corner? Oh, yeah, we've been doing this podcast for uh, over two years now. Uh, and the final segment, after we do the outro, um, basically, when we were doing Wheel of Time, there were a lot of people who were watching the Wheel of Time book club who didn't like that we did Smut Corner. And no, so they were like, per Wheel of Time isn't horny. <clears throat> there's no horniness. There's no... Se like, it doesn't but happen. But even before that... Sure. About 15% of our audience kept leaving every time we started Smut Corner. <clears throat> and so, so, we we, so we put it at the end when we were like, the 15% of you that want to leave can leave. Now the yes. degenerates will finish the show. Yes. So the <clears throat> very end. Best, yeah. best section of the, the podcast. It is the part of the show where we hope that because it's generally three hours in, we won't get canceled for any of the heinous acts we've described in it. I still, honestly, I like the um, the fade, like, uh, orgy, you know. That one was the good. My, my favorite is the 100 Companions blow bang. Mm, that's also a good one. Yeah. Poor Penny Longstocking. Anyways. Um, <laughs> Penny Longstocking. You keep calling her... Pippi Longstocking. Pippi Longstocking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> my homies love smug corner. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there, yeah, Pete, there actually is a smut corner at the end of every single book club. It has been for two years. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, it's the only segment on our show. Yeah, we don't have segments except for smut corner. Uh, yeah, you have to stick around. No, we have high-low. We, we have high-low and we have, true. yeah, yeah. True, 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 true. Um, so, basically, uh, all of this goes down. Cliss is like, well, I'll tell you something. Anyway, she, like, gives her her necklace and Cliss is like, well, that's not enough for this juicy tidbit of She's morsel like, of information. She's like, that's only for worth one secret. Uh, and so I need food. Eventually, uh, Vin is able to get out of Cliss that <laughs> fucking Ellen Venture is about to be assassinated, like, right now. Right now. She's like, that's probably already happened. Crazy. And so Vin runs to the balcony, uh, rips her dress off, and then goes full mistborn into the air in her undies, uh, gets onto the roof... Do what you looks do. down, there's a skylight, and she's looking over, and she's like, oh my god, there's six people, two fucking two misborns, misborns, two pewter thugs, the pewter arms, and uh, two... There's definitely a coin, coin shot. shot. Two coin shots. But I th was, it's two, two, were two, they two. both coin shots? Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's two, two, two. Yeah. Anyway, Vin, I'm not going to describe it, because you need to go fucking read this. Yeah. This Incredible. rocked. This Incredible. whole fight scene is so fucking good. Incredible. The moment where she, like, l makes that guy let go, because mm -hmm. he's wearing a metal breastplate, and he flies and hits the person. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that 
That's so awful. Oh, she throws a guy through the skylight in the middle of the party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. She, it's crazy. Oh, me mom also she that's she does pierce that copper yes, cloud. Yes, she right? does pierce the copper cloud. She's like, oh my god, I don't know where they are. They have a smoker with them, but I can feel something. I well, she maybe like it's only flares. one point shot and a smoker. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe she like flares like she's like desperate mm-hmm. and she happens to like feel this thing because she's very very strong. She's very good at what she does. Um. I'm sure that's not going to be important at any point. You know, it's definitely just going to be a coincidence. Uh, Uh, Philip says, I think this is the scene in the original book cover. I think you're right. The white, like, undergarment. Not, no, not the original book cover. Not the white one. I love our book cover. Honestly, these books are really pretty. Like, this is such a stunning piece of art with Mm -hmm. the mist cloak and the way that, like, she doesn't, it looks like a ghost. Yeah. And the way the blue mist wraps around her. No, the original cover looks like, um... The Final Empire. Empire. This is the original cover. And so, this, I, it's like oh. the statues. Foot. And, but like this foot. looks like white. Center frame foot. She's flying in like white undergarments. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool. It's beautiful. Um, That's really cool. This is a book I would love to have a first edition of. Mm. Uh, yeah. So uh, she fights them off, and so she, her, she's fighting... No, sorry. Yeah, it is two thugs, two coin shots, and two Mistborn. Oh, wait, no. There's no cop, There's no smoker yeah, with them. Yeah, they can smoke. One of the Mistborn is smoking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she gets up there, and Chandelariel's just like, I look really cool when I do this. <laughs> and, and, and Vin's like, God damn it, she is so cool. Why is she so cool? It doesn't matter. She's dead. Why is Regina George so cool? She's dead. Vin stabs her in the chest twice okay. with a... With a piece of wood. But we have to get into the how. Okay. Because this is, Vin, this is the moment where I was like, oh, Vin is a fucking, like, boss at combat. Boss she, bitch. They're ATM'd up. Everyone else is fucking dead or has fled. They're fucking fighting. They're going, boom, 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 ATM'd up. They're like, oh, my God, a million things are happening. There are archers shooting arrows at them that they're catching out of the air. This scene is incredible. I want Studio Trigger to animate it so badly. And then Vin turns off her ATM making Shan think that she ran out so Shan gets overconfident and at the last second before she strikes Vin strikes her ATM back up throws Shan off stabs her through the chest once the arrow breaks because it's pewtered up her skin is too hard so then she fucking does it a second time pierces her heart and Chandelariel dies on the grounds of Keep Venture it's so fucking cool I love cool. that she like stabs her here and, and Shan gets back up and she's like mm, okay a little bit to the left right there right there there's the heart <laughs> yo because that was always one thing where i'm like look i know that like anatomically people are like very similar in where your organs roughly sit but uh, everyone is so individual on the outside they got to be individual on the inside too so it's like oh i didn't find the heart the first time because everyone's always like yeah no i i shot him exactly in the spot where it was going to be the most detrimental and i'm like well are people a little bit different on the inside maybe and Vin is like, yeah, heart is roughly around there, so I'm going to try that. Nope, not that one. This one. It's right here. Yeah, it's in there somewhere. Right I don't, there. I can't find it, but. It's right <laughs> there. That's my boob. Under your boob. <laughs> Thank you. Um, no, it's, 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 it's just underneath your left lung. Yeah, I just mean, you know, there's probably some variation from humor to human to human. From humor to humor? Humor to humor. Humor Sorry, we're humor? going back to the bubonic plague and the dark ages and <laughs> the humors of the body. Isn't that what they thought medicine was? The humors of the body? I've never heard that before. What, what? The humors, the different humors. That's why they like leached people and they thought your humors were imbalanced. And so that's they, they had to balance them if you were sick. What's a humor though? I don't know. That's just what they were called. The four humors. Yeah. I don't know what they are. That's wild. I have, I've never heard of this before. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I just... I, yeah, that's why they, like, leech you cause, yeah. uh, and did other things, obviously, or bled you or whatever it was. Cool. They're yeah, fluids. no, I've, I've never heard okay, of that before. Yeah, they're fluids. That, that's how they believed medicine works was that there was, like, like a flesh. balance in the body that you had to get right. Blood bile to something else's. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, Slim? Wow. Chat, chat's popping up. Chat knows. Blood, yellow bile, black, yellow bile, black bile, yellow bile, black bile. That's a tongue twister. Bi- uh, and phlegm. Interesting. Yeah. This is this is something I know nothing about. I'm gonna have to do oh. some research. 
That's never happens. Yeah, no. I never get to mention something that you've never heard of. No, you do. Never. Never Usu- once. Usually it's like something like um, The Last Unicorn where I'm like, yeah, I just don't know what that is. But this is like... Well, you know what it is. No, I didn't know what you that was. You didn't know introduced... what The Last Unicorn no, was No, you introduced that to me. We haven't even watched it yet. I know. We need to fix this. Anyway. Uh... Anyways, doesn't matter. <laughs> so she matter. fucking murders Chandelier. Alar- Not murders. It's it's while fighting her. Uh, and Shan was trying to kill her ex-boyfriend. Uh, and so, yeah, she, she fucking murks her and it is so cool. It's a great moment. I think about this when I go to sleep at night. (laughs) Yeah, we reacted to it. So if you're on Patreon or a YouTube member, you can go watch that video. Um, so yeah, the crew, uh, is just like in the, they're in clubs' kitchen and they're like, so, so this one time I was like stabbing this nobleman and he shit himself. And then Vin walks in, they're like, wait, what the fuck just happened? Oh my god. Where's Seiza? So this one time. Or no, they're like, Seiza, you, wh- where's Vin? And Vin versus it. And they're like, whoa. And she's like, so... <laughs> Funny story. Uh, I just uh, stabbed Chandelarial to death. Um, funny, funny in story. In the garden. I accidentally started the house war. Yeah, that one was... That's Oopsie. on... Guys, guys. That one's, that one's on me. That's, that's on me. I, you know what? I'm, I'm replaying the night's events. Yeah, that, that one's on that's me. on me. Yeah, yeah. I did save Ellen Ventures, though, so... Yeah, which, uh, you know, Kelster just loves. Yeah, uh, I know that she went back to go get her dress to bring it back. Well, yeah, she had to. Why? Because everyone saw her in that dress that night. If they just found her dress... <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Yeah, she can't just leave the dress everyone saw her in on the balcony. Would have left it. ADHD brain would have Would have forgot that I like had a dress. Like you forgot your phone? Yeah. Go watch that TikTok. It's very funny. God damn it. Um, <laughs> I, yes. Brain sometimes go... Brr. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But no, that makes total uh, sense. Arzu brings I, up um, Dachshund, walks into the room, and immediately is like, what did you do to the dress? Yeah. Those things are expensive. <laughs> I do I do love Dachshund being like... The Dachshund is... Uh, generally, when men write female protagonists... Mm-hmm. They tend to overdo it with the clothing stuff in a way mm. that is like almost mocking women for being into clothes. Almost, right? Brandon Sanderson avoids that, but he still lets some of that like male gaziness through with Dachshund, but doesn't make it from a gaze perspective, but from a like this is a, a financial practical... issue for yes. him. Yes, yes, and, yes. And I think that it was a smart way for Brandon Sanderson to get to have a perspective on the clothes without it ever feeling like any of the characters are looking down on Vin for enjoying clothing. Which I feel like a lot of men tend to write into their female protagonist stories. Yes. Is sort of a judgmental thing that is doesn't exist here. But there is well, a fun interplay with Doxin and the money side of it. And we talked about this a little bit off book club uh, when we were just chatting, that um, I love that Vin is both like a, like a, a, a badass character yeah. mm-hmm. who also enjoys pretty things and dresses. Like, I find that there's a lot of tropes where, you know, if you want your strong female protagonist... She can't also be into girly things and, you know, girly in quotations because whatever you consider that, to, you know, dresses and, ma- and like, pretty and, like, the glass windows and things. Like, Vin is able to be both of those things and still be a really cool, badass female character. Yeah. Like, like it's not written that liking dresses takes away yeah. from her as a person. Uh, it's just part of, like, who she is. And, and I love that because... I do like pretty girly things, but yeah. I also like badass female characters. And You like, also have a ever-expanding sword collection. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you're allowed to be more complicated than just one thing or the yes, other. Yes, than yeah. makeup and dresses or, like, you know, combat and fight. Like, a, Vin feels like a fully fleshed out, complicated character. And, and I have so much appreciation for that because I, I don't see that very often. You I know? agree wholeheartedly. I, I, think that, I think that that's a great way to put it. Mm-hmm. I, it there... I was reading through some comments on our Percy Jackson video that we dropped last night for episode six. Mm -hmm. And one of the comments that I actually found interesting um, was uh, about Annabeth in that show and how they've made her more badass than the book, but she has no negative qualities. 
And that they've kind of, like, almost stripped her childhood away from her as a character. She does feel very adult. Yeah. And maybe that's because she watched her friend die in front of her. Sure, but, but Book book and Annabeth also did. Yeah. And has, like, like by, they've cut some elements of the character for that are in the book that are really cute and fun and make her seem 12. Mm-hmm. And I, I was thinking about it, and I was like, yeah, you know what? They're, they're kind of right. And Vin feels 17. Mm-hmm. That, that, all that to say, I, I think that by keeping some of that... Vin does feel like a 17-year-old trying to figure herself out throughout this yeah, book. And I think it's really impressive that. that Brandon Sanderson was able to write that. Yes, to capture that in a way that I can, like, full-on relate to. And mm-hmm. Ember makes a good point. There's a lot of not-like-the-other-girls trope and theme in novels. And, I, yeah, I, yeah. I so appreciate that that's not even part of it. She just is who she is. It's not that she's trying to pick me or be, like, deliberately be not this because it doesn't go with her character well, you know she just enjoys the things that she finds herself enjoying and i think that one of the interesting things about this world mm-hmm. <laughs> wheel of time fans might be upset with me for saying this oh I, there's some pictures of brissinger on my instagram but i'll take pictures of the other swords um this world because women can have misting powers mm-hmm. and misborn powers there is more parity between men and women in this society and so there isn't as much women there there isn't as um, wide a gap in in a patriarchal sense in this society Mm -hmm. in a way that I was told Wheel of Time did but Wheel of Time never did because it was only the Aes Sedai that experienced that lack of patriarchalness yes Right? Like, the, 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 the matriarchal elements of the Wheel of Time never made it down to regular people. Whereas in this, it almost feels like there is less of a patriarchal standard set. Min, Vin is given a lot more freedom. There's a lot of expectations on her clothing-wise within noble society. Yeah. Um, but there there's a lot of power in women in this book in an interesting way. There's no definite divide of the women do the gossiping and the men do the politicking or whatever it is it feels very much like everybody is using their abilities to further their own house regardless of what their gender might be yeah and and by shan being a like female assassin for her house Mm -hmm. there's just something really interesting in the storytelling of that and what that means for the placement of women within this society Mm -hmm. that is but that is not pointed at very much. And um, I, I actually found it, I found it refreshing that it wasn't, like Vin didn't like find her and be like, what, a, a woman? You know what I mean? Like yeah. there's none of that in this book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And so the expectation of the power of the people is actually really, um, is great. I, I, I'm, I, the, the more I think about this book, the more I like it, which tells me that I really like the book, right? The, 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 the as I yeah. pull away things from this novel, the... You take the rose-tinted glasses off of having immediately just read it. Yeah, and I would like for there to be more female characters, but sure. every single female character that we have is really good at something, Yeah. right? Cliss is introduced as a bimbo, and it is an act that she uses for power. Shan is introduced as a mean girl, and she is literally a mistborn assassin who's fully trained and is the most dangerous person that Vin fights hand to hand alone. Yeah, like yeah. every single fe- there aren't a lot of women, but every single one is really good at things. Yeah, and I think that that is really, and honestly, everybody is good at something except maybe Les the Bornis. We don't really get enough of him in this book. He does give a really interesting perspective on being a Tenai. He has a, he has his moment. Every yeah. character has their moment. I agree with that. Every single character is is in the story because they have a skill set mm-hmm. that they show to the audience, and I think that that is fascinating. One of the things that we'll get to, like the Inquisitors, have this whole political struggle taking place in the background of this book yeah. that leads to this incredible scene yeah. that Vin ends up being a part of, but. It, it's totally, it's it's not really her that sets it in motion. And like this, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I really like this book. There's so much going on in it that I'm like, as you peel back the layers, there's another thing mm-hmm. that you can just be like, and then this is here for a very specific reason to say this about the world. And like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's why like, even though I, I do have some complaints, right? I, I don't think the book is perfect. I think that it leans on some deus ex machina stuff. Some issues that I have with anime as well, which is why sure. I think it would make a good anime is because it has the same problems. Um, I, I think that there's too much of like, and then Vin is, oh, the, this is the end of the road, but then this person showed up and it wasn't the end of the road anymore. That happens a few too many times for a single book for me. Um, but 
And, and the prose could be a little bit grander at times. Yeah. That's it. That, those also, are my two complaints about a whole book, and I'm like, that's not much. Yeah, and I'm so excited to keep reading Brandon Sanderson's stuff, because the way people talk about it, it seems like he really grows into his voice, and yeah. it never is, like, the highest of prose, but I don't ever need it to be. Like, it just, yeah, I think, I think, mm. I'm, I, like, guys, I'm so excited for this journey with y'all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, no, we've gone through seven chapters, chat. <laughs> Calm the fuck down. We've gone through seven <laughs> chapters. There's only seven left. We're How halfway through. Dare. And it's an hour and 19 minutes. We're crushing it. Get off our dicks, chat. <laughs> Maybe there's eight left. Fucking get it's off our dicks. Huge. It's fine. It's fine. Get off our dicks. Definitely get off Clarissa's. Hers is so much bigger than mine. <laughs> um, <laughs> don't hurt yourself. Okay? Don't. don't you you got to war- you gotta warm up for that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um... Ah, uh, okay. Um, uh, so Ellen goes to see his dad again, and uh, his dad is like, yeah, uh, uh, Shan was a misborn sent to kill you. Oh, we find out all this is a lie because uh, Cliss did tell Vin that um, his father was part of the plot to kill Ellen. Get yeah, him out but of the way. Vin can't tell Ellen because no. they're not talking right now. No, Vin can't tell Ellen. But this whole scene, after mm. learning that information, was great because it sees it. you show how uh, Lord Venture like twists it and how Ellen is like, that guy wasn't dead when he hit the ground so something's up something's a little bit suspicious here pt we started at 26 and we're at 32 so i don't know what you're talking about 32 um <clears throat> yeah uh we also uh kelsier uh tests vin on her copper cloud theory and uh she's right she can sense through the copper clouds and it, this kind of is like one of the first times where the rules of allomancy are wrong but it isn't just oh no random it's storytelling. Is Brandon Sanderson the, crushes it. Is this the moment where she also um, shows Kelsier that she can tell what he's burning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is yeah. that this section? <clears throat> but, yeah. But, which was weird to me because Marsh could do that. So I guess Kelsier just didn't know how to do that, but Marsh started to teach her how to do that. Yeah, like Marsh, yeah, Marsh was like, this is kind <clears throat> of like how, <clears throat> but I think maybe... Like, obviously not everybody can do that because you have to be able to feel the alamancy around you and only if you can burn bronze can you do that. So I think Kelsier just spent his time learning other shit. We, we, we obviously realize that in terms of iron and steel, he yeah. is elite. Like, he is... Uh, un- well, unmatched. we haven't learned that yet, but we're about to. Yeah, we are. In a couple chapters. <laughs> uh, Vin and Les Bornis are up on a rooftop at the top of chapter 32. Uh, and, uh, House Alariel is taking down has- House Hastings at the moment. Just burning it. Burning it down. Burn, baby, burn. Uh, we do get the moment where Les Bordas does kind of teach, uh, Vin about being a tin eye. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's more, it's not about what you tricks. see, it's about what you can ignore. So I, and I'm like, I would love for, like, baby Jason Statham to be Les Bordas. Sure. And just, like, totally break the, like, cause you know they want to cast, like, a little scrawny dude, and I just want him to be jacked. And just very quiet. <laughs> Uh, sure, oh sure, my sure. god what I don't think he could do the action sequences so I would want someone to help him with the movie but like Guy Ritchie directing this directing this yeah Guy Ritchie who what has he done Guy Ritchie directs all the like British like thug movies where they talk real fast and they're always like I don't know if I've ever seen a British gonna... thug movie oh we've got to watch some he Guy Ritchie, he also directed the live-action Aladdin, which uh, was just a mistake all the way around. He was the wrong director for it. Sure, it I wasn't his style. It. Didn't see it, didn't um, I Snatch, Snatch would be great. Yeah, we, I'll show you Snatch. Uh, he did the Sherlock Holmes movie. Which ones? The, the, the Robert Downey Jr. ones. Okay. I think he has the right vibe to get the thieving crew of this right. Mm, okay, yeah. Sure, I, sure. Just would, I would want him to have a little bit of help with the action. Um... Because I, you know, his King Arthur movie, some of his, some of his action sequence shooting wasn't my favorite in some of his films. For sure. Um, but I think that he would get the like. Bring the people in from One Piece live action. So, no, bring in the the was it Quan the Quan brothers who the the people who directed Everything Everywhere All at Once. Yeah. Just get them to direct the action and uh, Lock Talk is Stock and Two Smoking Barrels. Absolutely, Guy Ritchie is one of my favorite directors. I just think in recent years he's been directing the wrong things. Um, he would be so good at this. Hmm. And, yeah. The Ooh. gentleman. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I've He's a great director. only seen Sherlock. Although, I think I saw King Arthur. 
Yeah. Don't remember it very well. Like, I was like, mm, I don't know about this one. The Den- the Denises? The Daniels Brothers. That's what it was. Oh. Is there okay, a person okay. named Daniel Kwan? Did I go the Daniels to Daniel Kwan to the Kwan Brothers? Is that the connection that my brain just did? Couldn't tell you. I have to know. Is there a person named Daniel Kwan? Because I think just... there might be. And I think that, like... There is a film director named Daniel Kwan. That oh. is so funny. Okay. No, and he directed everything ever all at once. I was right. Oh. But it's the he is the Daniels. Their last name is Kwan. Oh, no. The other Daniel is Daniel Scheinert. So they're the Daniels. They're not brothers. That is so funny. <laughs> Guys, it's fine. We figured it out. I thought they were the Kwans, and one of them was Daniel Kwan. No, they're the Daniels. But they're the Daniels. Anyway, they're great. If they directed Miss Moore, I'd be very happy. But I also think I Ritchie would crush the, like, club shop vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 All that's that to so say. Funny. That's so funny. Um, uh, they uh, go to, um, uh, Kelsier is like, hey, we got to go meet with Marsh uh, in a soothing station. Really important shit's going down. Uh, in a potential soothing station. They're like, go scout this location. See if we like it or not. Is that what they're doing? I thought they were having him, like, te- be tested. Well, no, because if they were in a soothing station, but why, no. Marsh has been to a bunch of the soothing stations. Yeah, but this one, they sent him uh, by himself to go scout it out because. Oh, because there's no soother there. There's no right, soothers right, 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 there. Right, right. Yes, exactly, exactly. That makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so they go in and. Because uh, Marsh is really good. Yeah, Marsh they're is. They're like. They're like worried. Marsh is impressed. worried that he's being too impressive, which I was like, what very a fucking impressed. humble brag. They're on my tail. <laughs> Yeah, I'm guys, I think I'm crushing this too hard. Yeah, I'm too good of a um, spy. Which I wish that we'd paid attention to more because that reveal at the end was so fucking shocking. Holy um, fuck. So they go and Marsh's body is flayed. Uh, he's definitely 100% dead. Definitely and all dead. the skin has been shredded off yeah. of his body. Removed from his body. Who needs the it's identification? definitely him. We don't have CSI. Grisham is not there to also, discover who it actually was. I also loved that they're like, so who was that body that was flayed? And he was like, well, actually, it's a whole process. That was only one of the bodies. Yeah, don't ask me about it. That was it. one of many. I was like, no, ask him about it. Please, I need to know. He didn't want to talk about it. He says, I, I can't talk about it. It was it was rough. Yeah, but I want to know. Can I'm selfish. show me? I want to know how to get alomancy. <laughs> nice. Uh, Crush that one. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, I feel yeah. I feel good about that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know where that pulled out of, but they. Uh, anyways, they cry about Marsh. It's very sad. Uh, <laughs> you make it sound sad. like it is at all. It was very well, sad. I was it. rocked. Oh, I was like Marsh. I, no, I I was genuinely upset. I, was I like, also love so it. awful. Um, I love when good guys die because it makes the stakes of the story seem real. No, but like I do. I I do. I love. This book, this book, a lot of people have, there's a lot of fake out deaths in this book, um, weirdly, uh, but they all worked for me because they're for magical reasons. Mm-hmm. Actually, there, I don't know if there's any real, f- this is a fake out death, but it also kind of isn't in a weird way. Because he's still it's completely only a fake changed out, yeah. forever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He is not like human anymore? Question mark? I like. Well, and there's a really like, it, it is both foreshadowed and explained very well why it goes the way that it does. Yeah. Um. Same with Renew, when Renew dies. Yeah. And they're like, we don't fucking know what that thing is. We don't know if it can die, yeah. right? So, like, the two fake-outs in this are both really well handled in a way that I didn't find either of them drew me out of the story. I think yeah. the way that Marsh comes in at the end is a little deus ex machina No, it's perfect. Um, it's but exactly... But it kind of had to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, here's... We'll get it. We'll talk about it later. I don't love it, but not because of the moment. Mm-hmm. It's because of how many of those moments happen back to back in yeah, the yeah. fucking like main keep. We'll talk about that later. It's more misdirection than fake out. Yes, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and there's a reason why it happens. Where it's like we can't talk about that. I don't want to spoil the wheel of time. Anyway, uh, fair. Uh, so they you know you know they go back to the 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 hideout. Um, and they start the big pullout. Uh, they realize that if Marsh was uh, inquisitorialized, uh, shit's going to go bad for Renu. So Renu starts leaving. Um, basically, everyone fucking gets out of town. Uh, is Or the, the plan is for everyone to get out of town. Um, and Kelsier orders everyone to go to the backup lair. Yeah. Uh, which sucks and is just two rooms underground. And yeah, it's rough. Yeah. Uh, and uh, then Kelsier 
uh, you think chapter 32 is mostly over. No, the chapter 32 goes even fucking crazier because Kelsier fucking goes to the pits of Hatson, kills all the guards, frees the slaves, d- sc- scuttles, de- like, gets over his fear of tight spaces. And he s- destroys all the ATM. But he has to crawl down a little bit to get close enough to do it. Like, this scene was hard to read. Yeah. I was palpitating. I felt that anxiety. Yeah, and I'm like, it was so good. It was so fucking good because you're like, I knew Kelsey was going to die at this point. Like, I just knew. No, no, this, no, this, this scene. Because I was like, oh, he gets his, he's given his final, his real revenge, right? He's given his, like, overcoming his biggest, um, like, internal obstacle moment. I was like, oh, there's no way he survives this book after destroying the pits. Yeah, that's kind of where I started to think yeah. as well that he wasn't going to make it. He's tying up loose ends. Exactly, We're not going to make it. And, like, I just felt, I felt the cave of this scene, you know? Yeah. I did. I, like, felt the walls closing in on me, too. And, like, the writing of it was so good Mm -hmm. and so just like perfectly descriptive of his fear and him overcoming that and the relief of the popping you know it's like when you get a really good pop of bubble wrap but it has an emotional significance and i've never gotten to emotionally pop bubble wrap but i feel like this is what it would be spend my nights with a bowl uh, a roll of bubble wrap pop pop spend my nights with a yeah, yeah yeah i said a bowl but it's a roll of bubble wrap Hope, Hope no, no one, one sees me getting, getting freaky. freaky. I'm nerdy mm-hmm. in the mm-hmm. extreme, mm-hmm. whiter than sour cream. cream. I was in the AV club, club and the glee club and even the chess team. The only question I ever thought was hard was do I like Kirk or do I like Picard? Spend every night at the Rolling Stones Fair. Got my name on my underwear. Anyways, so it's great moment. Great moment is beautiful, emotional, and he fucks up all the ATM because he's like, "Fuck you, Lord Ruler. Get wrecked, nerds." Yeah. <clears throat> but also, like, what does a lack of adium do to p- future fights, right? If it gets harder and harder to come by, yeah. they're fucked. They're yeah. fucked. You don't know who's going to have ATM and how much of it. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, 100%. It's going to it's gonna it make... It makes this very interesting. It also makes ATM that does exist more valuable. Yes. Which is so fascinating for the economy of... And they didn't find the ATM at the war. end. So... No. Do you that's... think that it exists, or yes. th- this was going to be a question asked at the end? But do you think it existed, or yeah? Because doesn't Marsh say this is where he keeps it, and it was gone? Like I thought there was somebody yeah. who was like, "This is where the ATM is," but maybe they but were just. But who guessing. would have gotten away with it? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, don't it know. is going to be interesting to see. I just don't know who could have been in on it enough, but is not trustworthy. Because yeah. it has to be a Mistborn. But we don't know any other Mistborns right now. All the Mistborns we know are dead. Yeah, because the I, we talked about this. Mistings can only use one metal at a time. So? So who else would use the ATM? We, would use, we, oh, you don't have don't to know. use it. You, if you have the ATM, you control the economy and you are rich. Yes, yeah, absolutely that. But who would use it? The problem is we don't know any other Mistborns. Oh, it's Ellen. Yeah, Ellen knows where it's kept and it's not there. So someone else has to have come in to get it. Because Ellen would be the person who knows exactly where it is because that was his family's job. But who knows Who knows when the last time Ellen would have seen... Like, the, if, Maybe Marsh if, hid it. I don't think so. No? You don't think that Marsh was like, this is too powerful? No, I think that the... I think that the... I think what we're going to come to find out is that ATM has been slowing... That the ability to find it has been slowing down for a while. But Ellen would they know are, that. And they've been running out of it. Ellen would know that. And we, I don't know what he knows fair. about ATM. It seems like his dad was not keeping him super abreast of the situation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. We're, we're, we're going to find out in a later book. We're not going to figure it out. Yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll find out. And so, yeah. So we get... It's an incredible... Um, it's incredible scene in the pits. I really, really, really it's love it. It's actually Shan Alarial. She's not dead. <laughs> uh, no, she's fucking dead. No, I know, I know. That woman, I that know. woman is deceased. Yeah, no, uh, it... It, it, it's 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 a mist wraith. Shannon Lariel comes back as a mist wraith. I mean, if the Kandra did it, it's possible. I. If um, uh, I Kelsier did it, right? Oh, Kandra Kelsier. Kandra Kandra Ke- Kelsier. Kandra Kelsier. Um, Kandra a Kelsier. But he wouldn't know exactly where it is because only Ellen. Anyways, 
I don't know. He's a chondra. I don't we'll know what know. they can do. We'll never. We'll, we'll not. We'll never know. We're do you not going to know gonna right now. Eat the bones of the Lord Ruler. I hope not. I hope they just get rid of it so that no one can. Well, that's true. You know. Uh, so in the backup layer, uh, he Kelsey shows up. He's like, "Hey guys, I destroyed the pits of Hatson," and they're like, "Oh my god, you just destroyed you mad lad the economy." Yeah. Uh, and the. Uh, they're talking about the 11th medal when you're going to leave right now. I know, I'm so sorry. Wow. Un-fucking believable. Uh, so they're talking about how the economy's destroyed. Uh, Vin and Sezet are talking about the, um, the, um, 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 11th medal, which we never get a name for, which is interesting. And, uh, the, we get to the, uh, we get to the scene where another round of executions is going to go down. So the crew is going to go out and see who's getting executed this time, only to see that in the carts are not uh, the typical sort of like beaten down, um, poorly uh, dressed ska. It is the ska still, but the well-dressed and uh, dapper ska who were working for Lord Renew. Uh, Lord Renew himself is there. Uh, Lester Bornis is in the cage as well uh and because uh les bornis was going up to help renew get up the canals get out of uh felice and so the uh the team has to make a choice uh everyone is kind of trying to figure out what they're going to do and kelsier turns to vin and is like this is what friendship is jumps off the building um and uh kelsier's like let's go fight uh, this is where we learn that Kelsier isn't just good at uh, being an Alamancer. He's a fucking master of it. He is flipping. He's dodging. He's ducking. He's diving. He's doing the five Ds. Kelsier would be a professional at dodgeball. Uh, you can dodge a wrench. You can dodge a ball. I've never seen dodgeball. You've never seen dodgeball? No, you just say... I thought that was the Slytherin thing in the Harry Potter musical. They're referencing dodgeball. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. They're referencing the bad guys in dodgeball. Ben Stiller's team. Yeah. Sure. At least I think they are. Because that's that's literally from dodgeball. Yeah. I got, Unless, yeah. I don't know which one came out first, weirdly now. Dodgeball, I think, came out before Harry Potter musical. It was uh, this long time ago. In a land far away. An Alamancer would dodge a wrench more easily than a ball. That's a good point. Depends on uh, the depends ball. On what, well, and it depends on what kind of misting there. Sure. A sure, mistborn. Sure. A, a, a soother? A, a, yeah, a Breeze. Breeze ain't dodging shit. Breeze, yeah. Breeze doesn't need to dodge shit. He convinces someone else to jump in front of him. So, Kelsier starts freeing prisoners, ripping the fucking iron bo- doors off. Uh, he uh, Ham goes off to recruit the army. Uh, there are some yeah. 200 soldiers nearby. Uh, that are just waiting for orders. Uh, and Breeze starts to show off his skills by soothing and rioting. He's like, we're gonna... Or he's just soothing, but he's doing his, like, anti-rioting where he, like, soothes away all the good feelings so people are only angry if he wants them angry. Um, and uh, he, they they start fighting. And it is also so cool. This is just, just much like the Valette versus uh, Shan fight. Uh, an Inquisitor steps forward, ready to take on Kelsier. And it gets so good so fast. This shit gets wild. Like the the way in which the <laughs> uh, Kelsier is just booping and bopping around with the coins, I, I could never describe it because you have to read the whole thing through exactly and to get it right. Vin but it's is so like good. Vin is like in awe. She's like, "Oh, he's a master at this." Yeah, mm-hmm. there is no one like him. Uh, yeah, I want an obsidian axe so bad. Stop! But like real obsidian. Obsidian mm, is one of I my. I think obsidian. I, I think a real obsidian axe would be wildly expensive. Probably, but I, I it, obsidian is one of my favorite stones. Oh really? Yeah. Why? I think it's beautiful. You can because because the the divots and the shine, like the way that it is so reflective, mm-hmm. um, and 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 you can't you don't really ever get it smooth, right? It has so much texture in it. 
Um, I thought I wanted to be a geologist for like six months when I was like 11. Um, I love like my, my favorite things at museums are like the rock things. They're cool, right? Like the texture. They're, right? they're not that expensive. Oh, they're not. We could own an obsidian axe. We could. Ragnar Viking axe. But like this one looks cool as shit. Look at this. Yeah. Oh, that's a necklace. That's very cool. I don't know, babe. Do we want to add an obsidian? Look at that one. Do we want to add an obsidian axe to our armory? Maybe we should wait in case there's one that's, like, important to the series, you know? Yeah. But, like, it's sick, right? Wait, is I there obsidian, obsidian. axe misborn? I, I want to see if someone sells one. Uh, you, there, what if it's a spoiler? I thought it's going to be the spoiler of the image. I don't know. Custom obsidian inquisitors. Wow. That's... Oh, that is so cool. Holy fuck. That is really cool. They're also not impact resistant. No, 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 no. It's for display only. Display no, only. No, we don't actually murder people. <laughs> Guys, we, we own steel swords not to kill people. Mm -hmm. Or we'll just get glass daggers. We just daggers. like owning swords. Just get glass daggers. I do want glass daggers. I do want to set, I want I want to like hang like obsidian axe and then daggers on either side. That would be so cool. Yeah. We'll make mist cloaks. We read one book and we're like, we're going to get tattoos. We're going to buy weapons. We're going to. Although, to be fair, we would... have Kalendor. We do have Kalendor. We do have Kalendor. The, the other thing that I do like... Kalendor about... was more expensive than any of our steel swords, and it's fucking plastic. I know. And it broke. Um, uh, I love that, like, all the metal symbols have their own thing, so it's really easy for tattoos. You know what I mean? <laughs> Anna Green says, on this episode of Book Club, Nerdy and Claire shop for an obsidian axe instead of talking about the book. <laughs> Never! Have you been here? Never! Hannah, is, it, is this your first book club? <laughs> is this your... How can I protect you from you? It's fine, I was doing. There were no spoilers. It's totally fine. I didn't um, I couldn't imagine that like just looking up acts would like Yeah, hey, you never know. You never know, but I get it. I get the it. Vin it's like the Vin killer and you're like, oh damn it. The Vin killer could you imagine? Uh <laughs> yeah. I would honestly like I I feel like I'll be able to identify um Sanderson fans if I see any of the like alloy symbols tattooed yeah. on anybody now. Because they're, they're pretty distinctive, and they look really cool. Um, Blind Seer says, uh, most places in the United States and Canada don't allow people to own sharpened swords. That's interesting. Yeah. I mean, they can't be, like, sharp. Ours are not sharp. Or which ones are? Not enough. They're pointy, but they're not, no, like, they're the sharp. edges. They're sharp. There's a reason why I warn people every time they come to our house not to fuck with them. They're not that sharp. They're sharp enough to cut me. If you go like this? No. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the ones downstairs are. The what your Brissinger isn't, but the ones downstairs are sharp. They are not that different. Should we test this? Yeah. We'll come back later. Take it's... a piece of paper and see if we can cut through it. While we film um, us testing how sharp our swords are. Yeah. Um. Anyway. <sighs> anyway. So, uh, Kelsier, uh, and uh, we later find out his name is Bendel. Um, fight like crazy. Uh, they're flipping things. Renew takes obsidian axes to the fucking net, like fucking cleaves down. So we're like, oh fuck, Renew is dead. Renew, definitely dead. Um, definitely dead. Uh, and he is. He, yeah. Renew, yeah. Renew is finally dead. Renew is dead. Um, because we'll never see him as Renew again. I do actually wonder if he could have come back as Renew. I feel like why not? If you've ingested the body, you can but like just maybe come if back. you like take too much damage, those bone the, those bones go away, and he needed to ingest a new body, right? Maybe we don't know how it works yet. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so uh, we'll he it out. <laughs> so he tries. Uh, Kelsier tries all sorts of ways to kill the Inquisitor. He tries to choke him out. Doesn't work. Uh, he finally pins him to the cart and then takes his obsidian axe and beheads him. With He pins him to the cart with his own eye spikes. Yes. He smashes him in the, in the face with a rock so that the spikes in his head stick into the cart behind it. Like, it was the most ridiculous, yeah. but like, cool. yeah, yeah. Oh my god. That reaction is on the, the channel. Yeah, it's um, fucking rad. Uh, and then he beheads him. Uh, the final emperor, or the lord ruler comes out uh, and Kelsier's like, alright, it's time. Uh, and Kelsier doesn't move. And I think that the reason he doesn't move is he burns the 11th medal. We don't know this for sure. But I think he burns the 11th medal, is confused by seeing the other things, and is trying to figure out what the shadows of the Lord Ruler mean. And that gives Lord and Ruler time to walk up and bitch slap him <laughs> so hard. 
<laughs> so yeah. Kelsier flies. His face is like fucking melting off on one side. Uh, and the Lord Ruler comes over and murders the fuck out of him. Yeah. The Lord Ruler gets stabbed through the chest twice. You were like, I think that the rumors about him being invincible are, are I thought fake. I thought that what it was going to... Because when they said that his body burnt away and he recovered, I was like, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, but And it still it's... doesn't really make any sense to me. Unless you can store so much of your energy and ferrochemy that like but no no just... if he burnt to if he burnt to just the bones what part of him was touching the metal to use the ferrochemy to heal oh like that it, it can't have actually worked out that way also if you're mm. beheaded how do you connect to your ferrochemical stuff if the connection is severed i'm just he's confused actually about got that. a bullet in his brain from world war ii um that's just benign what have you seen Wolverine Origins? Yeah, I think so. Well, okay, I was like, are you just referencing Wolverine Origins? Mm, no. Terrible movie. Uh, Fabu Moose, thank you for that super chat. <laughs> thank you, Fabu, for the super uh, chat. The reason I'm sitting and get so sharp is because it has excellent cleavage. Hey! Well done. <laughs> Very funny. Uh, and so more Inquisitors arrive. Uh, basically, it's uh, Kelsier is impaled with a spear, and they can't save him. Um, but uh, people start killing everybody. Uh, Vin gets to, like leap down and like cry with Kelsier for a second but Ham who has shown up with the army uh pulls her away and uh a lot of Scott die and Kelsier is dead. dead and um guys last week somebody said that Kelsier was gonna die in this book was it you did you say that was it you that called it no it wasn't you who else is on this pod oh wait it was me I fucking called it Fucking, I fucking, I'm mad. out of the park, nailed that shit. I'm mad. Let's see what else I got right. Um, Definitely nothing else. Uh, chapter Not five, sorry, part five starts with Vin. Uh, I loved this. This was so cool. Vin has placed three coins down so that she can just like float. And I was like, oh, this is just like Ray in... Um, at the when we first see Rey in Rise of Skywalker, when she's just floating in the air, yeah, uh, and because there's something calm about just not touching anything, right? It's like creating your own sensory deprivation tank, uh, except that yeah. Vin is flaring tin, so she is hyper aware of her senses. Uh, yeah, Nerd Stradamus. Oh my god! I want a shirt now that says Nerd Stradamus with just an arrow that points up at me. Great. You and then, have the power. And then under that it says Nerdster Penis and it points down. What the fuck? Oh my god. Oh god. Uh, Pete T says add in everything nerdy got wrong segment after Smack Corner. Let me have it this one time, you fucks. Let me let me enjoy this, this is once. not the one time that you're right. You've been right before. I know, right but before. everyone's always like, Nerdy's wrong about everything, and Clarice is right about everything. And I'm like, I'm trying to enjoy wrong. this one time. I was I was very Nerdstrobotomous, that goes on the back. Oh my uh, so, God. Okay. yeah, there's a lot of sadness. And sad. Very sad. Yeah. Kelsier's dead. Yeah, sorry. I was laughing and I went sad. You're a monster. Why? You're like evil. Why? At your core. Why? Because you're a ginger. <laughs> but I'm not. You can see my roots. <laughs> For one more week. Uh, and so uh, everyone kind of like makes their way up to the roof eventually mm -hmm. uh, because the Ska are revolting we Little... are revolting <laughs> sorry i can't it's a word it's so the uh yeah the, their fire start to spread in the distance and they can see uh one of the coins that uh vin was using to her tripod to float was the um fucked up coin from when kelsier and her had the push fight which is really cute tug of war. well it's really not tug of war though it's like the push of war of yeah whatever the opposite of a tug of war is yeah, yeah, yeah. um and uh so Vin starts to put together the pieces of this, mm -hmm. and um, the uh, she goes to Docs and is like, "I need to know where that warehouse is that Kelsier had you set up." So they go to the warehouse, and who's in the warehouse? But renew, but he's not renew anymore. Not he's renew anymore. Kelsier. Blech. Kelsier is there, and she's like, "Whoa, what the fuck?" Uh, and there's a shit ton of weapons, and she's and the Condra. Uh, is like uh, so basically I'm like an evolved myth mist wraith. I'm basically like up. if Ditto had an evolution. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Right. 
And, yeah, and was like sentient and could say more than just its own name. Ditto. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so uh, he's like, look, Kelsier gave you this pouch. Uh, Kelsier, there's a map of things that Kelsier wanted you to do. There's a whole plan. I was supposed to come he tell you. This all you along. guys got here. I was literally about to leave. It was Kelsier all along. <laughs> uh, I'm really glad. Um, I'm really glad that you guys came he- here this quickly because I was about to leave. We would have missed each other. It would have been unfortunate. Mm-hmm. Uh, the timing worked out. Uh, but he like points at people and he's like, he needed you to be the perfect politician. He needed you to be the bureaucrat. He needed you to be this. He trained you. And Vin is like, fuck, what did he want me to be? And she's like, I can murder people. Ass- assassin? Assassin. <laughs> uh, and so she goes, uh, she opens the pouch. She's like, oh, the 11th medal's in here. Don't know what that does. Uh, and the team are like, what are you going to do, Vin? And she's like, I'm going to get in that fucking room. I'm going to fuck shit up. I'm going to the fucking room. That We're going to do the thing that I failed to do already twice. Yeah. Well, the, not she the did. Thing that she I, was only yeah. there once. The thing I couldn't pull off. Yeah. Uh, we also learned that uh, uh, Bones Kelsier was out in the night inspiring people by being like, I'm dead, but look, I'm back. I'm, I'm also God. Go fight for me. Pretty much. That's a good plan. Yeah. This guy was like, no, I saw Kelsier tonight. He's alive. He's in the mists. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, I do. Uh, one thing I do love about the way that the the Scott approached the revolution is the why should we be scared of the mist if the Lord of the Mist Kelsier wasn't? Yeah. I, I really thought that that was a beautiful way of. He is the Lord of the Mist. Giving so. like a real like tangible reason to inspire the Scott beyond just oh he died for us. Yeah. But the like. they're not scared of the mist. Why should we be? Yeah. It's like a real like change of mind that can change the hope of a people. Yeah. 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 When you can take something back, like, yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. The Ska are mad. Yeah. And then now they have weapons. Blige Monkey says they should play Ave Maria when Kelsier dies in the live action. Look, I get it. I had a weird reaction to a song in One Piece and now everybody's mad at me. I'm sorry I didn't cry. I, I'm sorry, okay? The One Piece fans are never going to The One Piece fans are so, they're so mad at me. I know. And, like, I'm getting DMs. And I'm like, guys, like, it's not that big a deal. How dare you have a different reaction than I had to this moment? Yeah. Anyway. Um. <laughs> uh, it's too good. It's too good. Yeah. Um. So, uh, Vin goes to Credit Shaw. Yeah. And she's like, it's time to fight. Uh, and she breaks into, uh, she, she first goes to the gatehouse and is like, hey, do you guys really want to work for the Lord Ruler? Or do you guys want to go, uh, fucking fuck shit up with your people? And one of the guys is like, yeah, Garbador, uh, is like, yeah, you know what? I want to fucking, I want to fucking fight. Let's fucking do this. Yeah. I don't want to be on this side anymore. Fuck that. Like takes the sigil off and is like, all right, boys, let's yeah. go. Yeah, uh, and so she just walks into the uh, the keep because uh, Credit Shaw has the worst security. Like Credit Shaw is like any Imperial facility in Star Wars, bad levels of security. So I have a theory about that. Sure. Um, the Inquisitor's whole job is to catch Alamancers. Okay. And uh, if the security is pretty easy for them to get in, they don't have to go find them anymore. The the if the Alamancers walk into the palace. They're not scared of anything. They just fucking take them out. Like, yeah, come on in. Come on in. Then we catch you. Then we know Yeah, but it's not just dead. Mistborn that get in. Anybody can stroll into this building. Well, Ellen at Venture... any time. Ellen Venture is allowed in because his family literally is the A-team suppliers. They're there all the time. He knows where the A-team is. No, no, sure. I, I, I get that. Mm-hmm. It just... The, the security of this building is bad enough that... Th- Does heaven something's... have security? What? He's God. Does heaven have security? Yes. Like, no. very famously it does. No, it's like one dude who's like, ah, uh, you can't come in. There, no, yeah, but there's also angels with their all-seen eyes and the gates of heaven. They're not killing it people. It is, like, almost impossible to get into heaven. What do you mean? It is, it's very, you very go, few people. You do people. good, you walk right in. <laughs> no, I'm no, you have, to, you have to, like, prove that you're worthy. By what? Trial of combat? Like By, 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 yeah, by not having sinned too much in your life and by being willing to, like, I thought there was, like, a guy there. communicate your sins to Peter. I thought there was a guy there with a or list. Gabriel, whichever one. Who is like, no, you suck, leave. No, you good, go in. Kind of, yeah, that's part of it. Okay, well, yeah. That's not really security. The gates of heaven are very hard to sneak in through. 
Every single Have person sneaks into Credit Shot. I cannot, I cannot believe that you were like, no, the conveniences of how people get into Credit Shot is okay because heaven doesn't have security. Yeah. Like, what a fucking insane leap. God doesn't need security. God is like, boop, and you're dead. What are we talking about right now? <laughs> <laughs> how dare you bring in the real heaven to this fictional book? About prophets and religions. Wait a second. And magical metals. Um, yeah. It's whatever. Only crazy people would want to go in there anyways. <laughs> it's not like any little thief is going to be like, you know what? I'm going to rob God. They do multiple times yeah, in Kelsier, this book. Yeah, but Kelsier is not just like a random thief. Kelsier is also God to the sky. There is a He's literal God. There is a literal ska rebellion happening outside mm-hmm. the gates, and they have four people in the gate who look bored. To be fair, that's because the garrison is not in the city. Right, so you think security will be amped up a little bit. He doesn't... He sees God as inquisitors. This is... This is the an Lord insane... I just can't believe you said that there's no security like in heaven. Death. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying that... I'm. I'm look, I, I get why there's a lack of security. I just... <laughs> The end of this book had a number of people jump in Mm -hmm. to situations at the last second in a place that's supposed to have some security to it, right? That's supposed to be like the the big imposing fortress. And so it just, it gets a little bit convenient to me personally. I, and if you, if it doesn't to you, that's great. It just, it's, it's says that show, like in this book, says shows up as a deus ex machina save for Vin twice in the same building, which is like... It's just, it's a, it's a little bit convenient. And for a book that I am heaping praise on the way that I am, mm-hmm. I have to be honest about the imperfections. Because I, I don't want people to think that I just think that this is the most amazing piece of art ever created. Because there are things that I legitimately quibbled with. Yeah. Right? And I for find... me, like, I'm like, I, that did not bother me at all. I, everything that happened made complete sense. I, I find Seized saving her twice in the same building a little bit much. It's like poetry. It rhymes. Yes, but pe- that's not necessarily the best quote from Star Wars. You know what I mean? And so I, I and also like Seized shows up to save her. And then the next room over, Ellen shows up to save her. And then she goes up to the 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 tower. And mm-hmm. then Marsh, Deus Ex Machina is in to save her. And those three things happen so close back to back mm-hmm. that I just wish... It's like really quick. One poetry. or two of them weren't there so that the they individually had more impact. Sure, yeah. But yeah. The, the impact of the Deus Ex Machina gets lessened by having more and more of them so close together. Yeah, I think for me, the way that they built to it being Marsh the third time, like, was so crazy to me. Yeah. That mm-hmm. that it kind of negated that rep- the repetition of it. But That's fair. I, 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 I hear what you're saying. I, it, it is kind of like, oh, and then this person shows up and then this person shows up, which I get. Um, I, I, I think that I think the way that I would have changed it is that I would actually change the first time Seized shows up as not being in Credit Shaw, but Vin gets a little bit into the city where Seized finds her. So that Seized doesn't, isn't, doesn't break in and save her twice in the same building. I think that that... He doesn't to, break into the building the first time. Sure. Sorry, he saves her from the roof. Yeah, I, well, I'm just... But I'm just... But he breaks into, like, the structure around it. Yeah. Yeah, it's you just, could definitely take out one of those things and... And like, I think it would just... It'd be a little bit stronger to me in a book sure. that I think is at 9.5. Like, this is such a minor inconvenience in yeah, it, yeah, what yeah. I think is otherwise a really great book. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, for sure. But I just... I, you know, I want to be honest about... I, I Just because I'm loving it, I don't want to, like, forget to be critical. Yeah, or else what's the point of the show? we're being honest about it. Because yeah. it's something that you noticed. And, like, that's... Yeah, that's valid. I'm not... Um, <laughs> Linus Vickstrom says, I wish Ellen had gotten cut, as his explanation is the flimsiest one, in my opinion. I think that Ellen... I wish Ellen's presence there mattered more. What do you mean? Vin is like, you came back for me. Oh, no, no. It matters a lot to Vin's emotional state. Yeah, it's the best moment. I... I, I I wish that that had played out different. I wish that like getting him into the room had played out differently, so that I could have enjoyed that more instead of being like, wait, how, wait, how the fuck did he walked in? Because the guards are gone. Literally, Vin told them to leave, and the guards left, and so Ellen walked straight in. Those like... ones, yes. I, I I guess my question is like, who did the? But the Inquisitors just captured like their number one prey. Why aren't they checking up on the security of that? What do you mean? 
Like, the, it feels like the Inquisitors, like, don't notice that the security of the building has been compromised when it is so vastly compromised. Well, because she's clearly, like, a mistborn. So they're like, well, yeah, of course she got in here. Like, it's four normal dudes outside. Yeah, so they don't go check? Well, maybe Marsh killed the monsters. I don't fucking know. I, I just, it's it, it just, it, it, the, the security of this building is not my favorite thing about the book. I want to move on from it. I've said what I've said. Mm-hmm. We don't need to keep talking about it. But, like, I, 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 that's just my... That's all. That's how I feel. Yeah, see, and for me, that that's the one that, like, because, like Ellen being there and that emotional beat for Vin meant so much to me that I'm like, no, I need to defend it because Let's I get to it when it we so get much. to it then. Let's stop talking about it now. Sure, sure, yeah. sure, sure. Uh, Arzu, thank you for that super chat. Uh, Obligator, why are we talking? The city is burning. The Lord, Ruler, and Car. Let's argue over who gets to rule the ashes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Thank you for that super chat. Thank you for that super chat, Arzu. Um, um, yeah, um, we're not there yet, though. Everything is on fire. We haven't, we haven't gotten there yet. We're still at... Uh, the Vin gets into the building and mm-hmm. uh, she takes powdered pewter and she like throws it into the air like a cloud to throw off the Inquisitor's ability to see yeah. because it's too blinding, which is like, A, terrible for everyone because if you breathe in that metal dust, you're gonna you're fucked. Into your lungs? Yeah, like Vin might be like Maybe killing herself here. Maybe you can here. burn <clears> the <throat> metals that you breathe in as Oh well. shit, I didn't even think about that. You would ingest it and then just be able to burn it. Well, no, you don't ingest it. You breathe it in and it goes into your lungs. Well, that's ingesting it, but... I thought ingesting was stomach. I think ingesting is just taking it into your body. Because you, like... I thought... Okay, I thought ingesting was, like, your trachea... Or, sorry, your your esophagus. Mm Mm-hmm. And then... I don't know. I just thought ingesting was eating or, or drinking and it goes into your stomach. I thought ingesting just meant it, taking it into your body. I, I don't know. What actually. does ingesting mean? Um, just, you know what? But no, you could. I feel like you could totally snort metals and use it. I would say that snorting is ingesting. Yeah. I don't, yeah. Interesting. I don't know. To take food, drink, or substance into the bottle by, by swallowing, swallowing or absorbing. absorbing it. So if you so breathe if you something. absorb it into your lungs, does that count? Well, when you uh, when you put something into your lungs, it gets ingested into your bloodstream. That's it does. How your oh, blood I thought it works. settled in your lungs, which is why, I like, right? But but by burning it, you would be ingesting it because you'd be absorbing the power of it into your body. So if you took it if into you your lungs, if you burn it, then yes, I guess you would ingest it in a. Sense. None of this matters. The... It's it, no, it's cool. <laughs> I think it's cool. I know, but we're like, yeah. I wonder if it affects you differently. Probably not. It's probably just all goes into a reserve. Like your body recognizes the metal and knows what to do with it depending on where it comes from. Because you know, Vin is able to subconsciously burn metals even though there's only like a trace amount. She doesn't like have it. She like stores them up over days from eating and drinking. So yeah. I feel like it's just one kind of like storage. Like do Alamancers have an extra organ? No. Hmm. Not that we know of. Maybe. But we, we we don't find out about an extra yeah. organ in this book. Maybe that's what the appendix is for, and we just don't know how to use it. It's the appendix, guys. It's the appendix. The appendix is... A hundred percent. Why wouldn't it be? Uh, and so she uh, breaks into a room. Uh, she she sta- she breaks. She stabs one of the Inquisitors through the leg. Uh, she uh, has the other in blinded by pewter dust. Okay, I have to shout out, though, the moment where she throws the arrowheads that have metal rings yes, on them. Yes, 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 yes. So cool. And so they push it, and the rings just come back off the back, but the arrows... Oh, my God. Yeah, it's very So cool. good. But the stone keeps going. So good. This is where this is where Vin is like, I have some ideas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's kind of, she's kind of multi-classing into Artificer here. Yeah. And I, I love that for her. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> she breaks into the house within the thing, uh, and she sees that there's just an old guy in there with... Um, uh, like furs and the skins of fine animals, uh, and uh, I'm assuming that this is what a terraceman's house looked like before the ascension. Yeah, it's like she broke into the Met and like broke into like uh, an art installation of, of life setups. before. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And there's just a man in his 70s sitting there being like, "Yo, what was what is happening?" And they're like, "Oh, don't." don't the... Sorry, Lord Ruler. So we'll car. Deal with it. Um, grabs her by the shoulders like we sorry sorry for interrupting your nap old man uh go back to sleep we're gonna take this woman to prison go back to sleep and the lord ruler's like okay whatever i i genuinely don't care uh about any of this so have fun with storing up his strength yeah you know he's doing the thing yeah uh and so 
the she she burns the eleventh medal, uh, and she's like she sees other versions of this guy, but she's very confused I what think that it's means. Just one, right? Oh, is it just the one? I, I think it's one. There's one other version of him. Yeah, and it's like, yeah. the, you know, the terraceman that's described in, like, the journal. And so Vin is knocked out. Uh, and then when she comes back to consciousness, she's in the, um, uh, anyway. Uh, so Ellen, uh, we cut over to Ellen. Uh-huh. Uh, and Ellen uh, meets up with his dad and is like, yo, Pops, what's, what's the skinny? And... Ellen's dad is like, yeah, son. So the dealio is that the we're ska the are doing... We're getting the dad out of here. We're, we're getting the dealio dad out of here. Uh, and Ellen is like, you know what? This is my chance. No. I'm going to stick around. And his dad is like, I'm yeah, you know what? Good. I'm going to do my own thing. Good plan. Why don't you fucking die? Yeah. Uh, and yeah. that would be great for me. That'd be great for me. I do love that Ellen is like, can I keep the soldiers? And his dad is like, I literally don't have room for them. So yes. Yeah, you have them. Good if luck. I had room for them, no. But, uh, but no. I'm trying to sneak out of town. So, yeah, go for it. Go for it. Uh, enjoy that. Yeah. Also, something happened on the ATM mine, so you're going to have to deal with that and get fucked. Uh, yeah, he's like, ah, I need a fall guy for this. Literally. Um, but in French. Yeah, I guess they would have French accents, right? Why? Because they're all, apparently this is all like based on France. All the names are French in this book. Real? Oh. Calcier. It's actually Kelsier, weirdly. Oh, I thought I, I thought Renu could be French. Renu? But like the, the, uh, the O U X at the end? Amel? Breeze. That doesn't sound French to Brie? me. Brise. Brise? No, it's not really a French word. It's it yeah. Um, the, the nicknames aren't. Green, like the, no, the nicknames aren't. Uh, but the names are French. Luthadel. I don't sure. Luthadel, not so much. Not no, so French. I, no, I don't buy it. I don't buy it. I, no, I think that's fake news. I, I think uh, it is fantasy. It's fantasy France. Yeah. Um, which is uh, why they're having so many balls. All the balls. Uh, and so, Lots of balls. Uh, I, I liked Ellen's moment here being like, take everyone to keep Lacal, uh, team up with our, bat, with our rivals to survive the night. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go turn myself in. And they're like, all right, good yeah, luck. Yeah, go for it. Have fun. Uh, Vin wakes up in, uh, cell and, uh, she's forced to swallow something that gets rid of all of her medals, um, which was very interesting. Uh, I wonder what medal it is. Like, we don't know, which is cool. It leaves questions open for the next book. You know what I mean? Well, and that's why we had the discussion earlier of like, okay, but how many, how many are there? Um, because whatever the Lord Ruler has decided to teach... Could, may or may not be true like any yeah. percentage of it because he can he is god he could make up whatever he wanted and have his people to teach that and then no one would ever know otherwise because he's like well you'll die if you test anything else so don't do that like so uh we we get this interesting sequence where we get to see vin's intelligence right where she's locked in the cell uh and she's thinking about metals uh because all of hers are gone uh now uh and she's thinking about them and she's thinking if Gold and this 11th medal seem way closer together than ATM and, the, and uh, gold do. And so yeah. she's like, I don't think that gold, I don't think that uh, gold or that ATM is the 10th medal. I think that the 11th medal is the 10th medal because it is the pairing with gold. And the ATM must have a pair. Mm. So like, what would, the, what is the opposite of ATM? I still think there's got to be a medal where you can see the past. Gold. But that's not the past. That is an alternate version of yourself. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Gold is the alternate version of yourself, and the 11th medal is the alternate version of somebody, somebody else. Somebody else. And so the pa- the pairing with ATM has to be seeing the past somehow. Like, if you were mm-hmm. an investigator or a detective, you could go to a crime scene and burn whatever the medal is... And yes, see okay. things that happened in a space or see things that a person has done in their past. Mm. That, that's got to be a thing. Maybe it shows you why somebody's doing what they're doing. How would you explain why? I don't know. That would be tough. I mean, they can feel other people's emotions by burning pewter. So maybe you just get a feeling. I, I got, got this me. feeling. Oh. Inside my bones. I was, I got a feeling. Yeah, good one. Good pull as well. 
Uh, and yeah. so, yeah, I'm, I'm curious what that's going to be. Uh, so she's basically there. Uh, she gets dragged um, to the throne room yeah. um, by an inquisitor. And uh, they're like, you are going to actually help us. Thank you for showing up. So Carr is like, Lord Ruler, I have news. Uh, and she's like, w- w- what news? And he's like, <laughs> what news from the mark? that motherfucker over there fucked a scar lady and didn't murder her, which is a sin because this child is that is that kid. That's my and daddy. The the Lord Prahlad is like, that's not possible. I think I murdered them all. <laughs> and the Lord Ruler apparently can sense lying. I'm assuming through soothing and rioting and getting to sense emotions that way. Probably having that like inherent feeling. Like e- like if you could sense that within a person, I think. Unless they told a lie that they absolutely believed. Yeah. Well, and that's why he was like, oh, you're lying. And he's like, well, you know, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. But he can't know for sure. And, and so he gets killed. And the... Oh, yeah. The Lord Ruler is like, all right, you can have him. And they literally rip him apart. Yeah. The Inquisitors, Inquisitors are fucked up. Like, I don't yeah. know what the process is to make them, and I don't. I wonder how that has affected Marsh, but, like, they are, like, bloodthirsty. Yeah, they enjoy it a little bit too much. Yeah, it's it's it was, it was a lot. Um, and so uh, the Steel Ministry gets control of the Canton of Orthodoxy. So they take over the church, which is... You know, the like the the version of a country where like Catholicism is in charge, um, similar but the not obviously of not. Uh, obviously not because the Pope dresses much nicer than uh, the Lord Ruler does with those fucking million dollar shoes. Um, <laughs> Did he buy is, the Mario? The Pope boots? is very wasteful. Oh, okay. uh, unfortunately, uh, <laughs> I'm shocked. Anyway, uh, and how shocked. I am. So then, uh, Carr uh, and uh, uh, Carr and Marsh, uh, who we later find out is Marsh, but we don't know yet is Marsh. Uh, yes. They uh, reveal to Vin that not only did they know that she was around, or no, sorry, Bre- that Bre- sorry, no, that's not what happens. Brellin always believed that she was around, or Brendel, whatever his fucking name was, and. Uh, Buddy. No, Carr. Carr did. No, no, no. Brendel is dead. Brendel always oh, he's, yes, thought he's dead. that he uh, fought Kelsey and that died. Always thought that Vin was around, but not the other Inquisitors weren't so sure. And so he's like, "I wish that Brendel could have been here to be right." Uh, and she's like, "So my brother sold me out." And he's like, "No, your brother. No he's... matter how much we tortured you, insisted that you had starved to death." Yeah. And we find out that not only did Reen not abandon her, Reen was a fucking boss. Reen had the constitution of a fucking barbarian at level 20. This dude fucking took blow after blow after blow after blow, and he never gave up his sister. And so, god damn it, Reen, you were maybe not the best guy in life, but your final act was heroic as hell. Yeah, you know what? You get to redeem yourself a little bit, and we, truly, we love a redemption story. Truly redemption for Reen yes. a little bit. <laughs> Still not the best dude, obviously. He yeah. beat his sister. He kind of sucked. But, like... Way, way to go out like a boss. Yes. You yes, know? Yes, yes, Yeah. Yeah. He, he, That's not nothing. His final act was uh, selfless, and that is that is commendable. Yeah. You know? um, the yeah. number of people who pop into a show that is in the podcast category and like are like, oh, you didn't mention, you didn't say hi to me, so I left. I'm leaving. It's like, okay, it's a pod. Like, what, what are you? People are so weird. I don't get it. Like, I, yeah, I don't know. Look at the category. Um, anyway, so then Vin is taken back to her cell because she has now um, been helpful. Yeah, well, they're like, uh, Lord was like, okay, kill her. And the Inquisitor was like, I, I want to ask her some stuff for, you know, I got to figure some shit out. And he's like, yeah, yeah, sure, do whatever you want. Yeah. So the Lord Ruler calls all the obligators in so that he can tell them that, like, they're, um, no, everyone's saying hi, God damn it. <laughs> hi, everybody. Hi. Hi, blanket hi. Hi, chat. Blanket hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and so we get uh, to chapter 37. Mm-hmm. Goradel, that's his name, not Garbador, the Pokemon. Gar- uh, <laughs> uh, Gor- yeah. Goradel uh, uh, lets Docs know that Vin has been captured. Goradel is the guy who ripped off his insignia and joined the rebellion a few chapters ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he's like, "We, there's nothing we can do." She's like in the fucking Inquisitor prison. Like, there's there's nothing we can do. And then Ellen, uh, Ellen is brought in because he's, you know, he 
turns himself in. Oh. Uh, and he's yeah, like, yeah. hi, uh, I know you are bloodthirsty and want to kill... Don't kill everybody. We Let's work together. Let's. I want to save your rebellion. I've read a lot of books. Yeah, okay. he, he comes in with a little bit of a like elitist... Uh, it's almost like mansplaining, except everyone in the room is a man. It's noble-splaining. He's noble-splaining to him. Yeah. He's and not Dachshund. wrong, though. He's not wrong. He's not wrong. Uh, and he's also like, let me help you. But first, I need to go get my girlfriend out of prison. Uh, They're like, wait, where is Valette? Yeah. Like, oh yeah, Vin. Yeah, she's probably dead. Sorry, I, sorry, buddy. I look, and I agree with you. I do love that Ellen is like, well, I'm, then I'm gonna go break her out. <laughs> I've never been in a fight before. No, I love. I lo- but if that that sexy ass lady's in danger, I um, I must man up. I I I really I love this moment because of what it meant for Vin. Like I it. Uh, yeah. I just wish we'd gotten a little bit more of her, his perspective so we didn't see the moment he breaks into the room. Because we're already getting his POV, and it would have felt a little bit less deus ex machina-y to me. If he had been if, like, wow, there's no one in the palace. It's like weirdly empty or something. If we had had a beat with him before she sees him. Yeah, I think that's fair. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think that if you just build up that, or that, like, if you give me a moment of him having to overcome an obstacle to get there, I don't. Because I saw him overcome an obstacle to get there, I don't feel as deus ex machina-y about it. Okay, sure, yeah, yeah. You know? Sure. Um, and so, like, if he had had to talk his way through, if we had just seen him talk his way through... He flashes his, like, yeah. Ellen Venture badge. But I, li- I like that he went to help her, and I like that she sees someone come back for her, right? Yes. I, I do, I do. That moment that. is is very special. Uh, and so, uh, uh, in the cell, uh, Sezed is thrown into the cell next to her, uh, and he looks weak and beaten, uh, and... Ba- oh, he's been beat the fuck up, but he pretends to be fucked up until the yeah. Inquisitor leaves. Which is, like, a brilliant... Seizad's strategy here is so smart. And also, like, the threat. Like, the Inquisitor's being like, your brother never broke because he was protecting someone. And so we're going to break you by giving you the opportunity to protect someone. They're, they're using her, the fact that her brother's torture didn't work... Mm-hmm. To come up with a torture that will work on her, which is that they're going to, instead of torturing her, they're just going to torture Seizet in front of her. Um, and so they're like, they go to get prepared for that. And Seizet is like... Well, they go to get their win from the... Well, and they have to, yeah, they have some stuff they got to go do first. Some, you know, logistical stuff. Eh, don't worry about it. And Seizet is like, I learned from you, mistress. I swallowed it. And then he hulks out and like grows three sizes that day and breaks the... He's like... <clears throat> breaks the yeah. cuffs, breaks the fucking door down, busts into the room, and he's like, I don't have that much more of my cop. Oh, fuck. And he just starts to, they're like about to start a fight, and she just, he just starts to <sighs> shrink. And I, this is the thing this I wanted live action. Oh, no. no. <laughs> this has to be animated. You know, like, just because of how everybody casts every movie ever, Seizet is Jaman Hansu. You know what I mean? And like, Jaman Hansu is a better actor than the role he is given. True. He is a fucking rock star who yeah. deserves better yeah but this is i, I just Maybe know he that he's gonna be princess tracks no he complains about how he's cast oh okay I, okay he complains about it constantly because he knows that he should be the lead of movies he is a fucking star and he should be the lead of more movies but he is always the say Z role yeah. he gets this part in every film ever he's in three dcu movies as three different versions of this character <laughs> literally yeah. um yeah yeah I I I'm yeah. a I am a big I I will always be a Jaman Hansu uh, defender and fan. I I think Fair. he's wonderful. He's fantastic. Um, and I, I just I want to see him be the center head on the floating head poster and not just like on top left. Okay, okay, okay. Hear me out. Hear me out. Um, young uh, Jaman Hansu and Idris Elba as Vin and or not Vin and Kelsey and Marsh. Ooh. But Idris Elba is Marsh. Yeah. And Jaman Hansu is Kelsey. Yeah. He just has this powerful charisma about him. I would want... Honestly, Jaman Hansu as Kelsier would go hard. Here's the thing. He He might be a little bit too old now. That's what I mean. The younger versions of them. Here's the thing. I feel like in his roles, he never gets to smile. No, I mean it. Mm -hmm, I mean mm -hmm. it. And Kelsier... I know exactly what you mean. ...only smiles. He takes that back. And I think that those two, as brothers, would fucking... Yeah, anyways. It'd be amazing. Um... Moving on. I just I just got excited about that. Wow. Idris Elba as Kelsey would also be great, though. Both of them would be fantastic as either one. People are fan casting Giancarlo Esposito for Seized? 
Honestly, uh, he is the bad guy from Breaking Bad. He's um, uh, Gus Fring in Breaking Bad. He is uh, oh uh, Mandalorian. He is um, oh the uh, Moff Gideon. Moff Gideon. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I could see that. I for would sure. Yeah, get Giancarlo to be a good guy for once. That would be really fun. Mm-hmm. I think he would be great too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Edgar and the boys, yeah. He might, he might, yeah, it, it's tough. I don't know how many more books he's in. So if you were going to do it, he's just, you know, like he's starting to age a little bit out of the, like, um, out of doing that much action. And so it would, it would really depend on how many years they're going to be making. Like if he's in all six of the Mistborn books and they want to make six movies, you just have to think about how old they're going to be for yeah. the, like the final movie, right? Proposition for yeah. you. Lance Reddick would have been an amazing says that. Also, Lance Reddick would have been an amazing um, uh, dachshund. Oh, interesting. He plays that like like Straight mathematical man. kind of brilliant. Mm. Um, Lance Reddick is the guy who is the brains behind an operation, but uh-huh. doesn't have powers, but still like has power within the group because of that. That's yeah. a part that I think that he would do really well at. I have a question for you. Yes. Because we like start book two and then we have to take a week off for yeah. Denver and then come back. What if instead of starting book two before we leave, we both put together like a full-on PowerPoint presentation fan cast of Mistborn for that week? Or do you want to just get in the book? And Let's get in the break? book. And also that would be way more work than reading. And there's a lot of stuff I have to do that week. Okay. I, I, I like the idea. I just, that I have a lot of stuff that I have to do next week. For Dragonlance, and I, 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 that would be just too, uh, that's a lot to take on when we're trying to slow down a little bit. That's fair. I just, then I don't want to break up the book because I'm like. I, I know, but I, we, yeah. I think we have to. Okay, never mind. Who would you cast as Lord Ruler, though? Anyone? He's not really in the, he's not really there enough to matter. He only has three scenes. I would cast the dude they put in Shadow and Bone. Ben Barnes? Yeah. Yeah, Ben Barnes would be good. Um, Ben Barnes, I, I think that also, like, have the old version be like Christopher Walken and Ben Barnes. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Vigo Mortensen. That would be fun. Sean Bean. Sean Bean, <laughs> uh, Sean Bean as Kelsier would be great, but he's he's probably too old now. Danny DeVito. <laughs> Christ. Uh, I just got excited because I was like, oh, I want to cast this now, but it, yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Uh, anyway. Well, let's finish the book. Yes. Uh, so Vin, um, they break out. Ellen arrives, uh, and it's cute. And she's like, "You came back for me." Uh, she like gets her shit off the wall, ingests her metal. Just when Ellen is like about to fight and get his ass kicked because he has no idea what he's doing, Vin literally like leaps over him, lands in front of him, takes everybody out, and then she turns and is like, "Yeah, I'm fucking hot." <laughs> Ellen is like, "Oh god." Uh, and Ellen is like, "Oh man," because Ellen is like 21, right? 20 or 21 like I think there's like because Vin just turned 17 so Ellen is like god in a year you're gonna be so hot (laughs) well no if you're in Canada you can have what's the number we don't need to get we don't need to we don't need to get into Romeo and Juliet laws right now no I just mean like 17 and like 20 or 21 that's not like it's not that bad no it's not that bad it's not that bad um Especially when you, you're, like, you know, 23 and 28. Like, at that point, it's, like, whatever. Yeah, especially since, like, he's the only person who's ever truly, like, been nice to her her age. <laughs> Even though he did nag her in the beginning. <laughs> uh... Oh, man. Uh, and so, recharged, alimantically, she takes off for the skies. Uh, and uh, is like, I'm gonna go kill the Lord Ruler. It didn't go I great. I have an idea. 20 seconds ago when I tried, but we're going to do this again. Yes. And so she breaks into the top room through, uh, she starts throwing coins through the glass. A uh, car is in the room um, because he's like delivering his thing. And so she does have uh, an inquisitor and uh, a Lord Ruler, uh, but she's kind of ignoring car. She just b- tries. We get the car POV, which is fun. Yeah. She burns metal uh, to see, uh, the 11th metal to see the, um, to see the uh, visage of his yeah. uh, alternate self or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so she runs up and nobody stops her because she's not really going towards the Lord Ruler. So people are just trying to see what's going on. And she stabs a glass dagger into the visage and nothing happens. And she goes, well, that was my only plan. So I fucked up. I'm fucked now. Oops. Oopsie doopsie. 
Uh, yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, that sucks. <laughs> good try, good try. All right, I guess we're there now. Lotteroo says Kelsey will be clearly beat Owen Wilson. Like, I think they are joking, but I no. don't hate that. No, I, I don't. I don't hate it. Like, Mobius, like, Loki, Owen Wilson showed was, me that he has some other vibes in him. And, like, I don't know. I think he he's too old, I think. But I, I, I wouldn't hate it. No, Loki as the Lord Ruler. Oh, Tom Hiddleston? Tom Hiddleston. Tom Hiddleston could also be Kelsier. If they were going to go white. True. There's so Anyways, many people that could be sorry. Kelsier. There's I, so many great actors that could crush this role. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so... Um, oh. I, I love that everyone in the room is probably like, what the fuck is this girl doing? Arzu brings up that Ellen is um, distracted by Vin's underwear. That is a good beat where he's True. like, uh, can like, you put can some you, clothes on? Uh, and she's like, I'm, I'm fighting right now. Yeah. <laughs> Ellen, there's more important shit. Get your head out of your dick. Yeah. Um, True. <laughs> Yeah, get your head out of your dick. Uh, and so uh, the 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 fight begins, and uh, an Inquisitor breaks into the room, rushes forward, rips open the Inquisitor in front of him's clothing from behind, and pulls a spike out of his back. Car dies immediately because they literally have like one thing that if you pull out, they just there is there is how, uh, how many spikes eleven. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if you separate the top spikes from the bottom spikes, they die. So there's two here. Yeah. And then there's one here. Yeah. And then then there's eight down here. And so if you pull out this one and they're they they disconnect, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um I'm so interested to learn. Donald Glover is Kelsier? Fuck, I'd be into it. Oh oh. hmm. I would be really into that. Yeah. Because he's so charming. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, a thousand percent. That that charisma that just like oozes out, like you, that you can't turn off. Like and like Donald Donald Glover also has the like that the the sequence of him playing the nobleman and the like um, beggar back to back would be a, he would crush that. So good. Fuck, I really like the idea of Donald Glover in that part, and, yeah. and he's the right age where he's like old enough that he's like an adult. Uh, and, like, old enough to feel motherly towards Vin, but young enough that he's still in that, like, prime revolutionary age of, like, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um, Donald would finally get to be Spider-Man. Here's the thing. (laughs) I think if Ham Ham is going to be cast as a woman, it's gotta be Florence Pugh. I like that. I like that casting. Florence Pugh as Ham. Yeah. Yeah. See, this is what I mean. I want to do a whole, like, anyways... Yeah. Or, um, oh my god, who was the narrator in the Broadway revival of Pippin? Oh, that girl. Her arms, she just has, she already has pewter she arms. She has arms, yes. <laughs> Every time she's like, we've got magic to do, and you're like, what <laughs> the fuck? That woman's arms are amazing! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would give it to her purely for her arms. <laughs> Maybe I will make a PowerPoint, and I will present it myself, so that you don't have to do the extra work. <laughs> you need to start on your cosplay. Yeah. Stop adding work. You're like, we gotta, you get mad at me for adding work. And then you're like, I want to add work. I got We go to Denver in two weeks. We need to get shit done. Yeah, but I don't have to work on my cosplay until after. And we're not even going to fucking, what's You need to start your cosplay before. Or else you're going to crunch. And then you're going to be mad at yourself for crunching. We're not even going to WonderCon anymore. WonderCon. Yes. Yes. And PAX East is the week before. It's closer. We also have a lot of painting and shit that needs to get done <sighs> next week. She's Don't kind of add work. Okay. Do it while we're in, work on it mentally while we're in Denver and present it on the 16th. There was a whole chat in the Denver thing that was like, if anyone wants to do fun PowerPoint like presentation things, I'll just bring my Mistborn one and no one else will know what I'm talking about. They're like, I fan cast Mistborn because I read one book and I got Do that obsessed. as a separate video on the channel and then that way we don't lose a book club. Okay. And then we get views. Okay. Oh Work smarter, not we are, harder. Okay, chapter 38. Sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. Um, uh, so then uh, Vin is uh, thrown into the pillar. Her leg breaks. Yeah, uh, it's, it's bad. It's a single fracture. It's not that bad. Uh, and then she starts to pull on the... Oh, uh, and so uh, Marsh has ripped open the Lord Ruler's shirt. Hoping there would be a spike in his back. There's not. No He's spike, just a yeah. dude, but he has like coiled things on his upper arms. That uh, are like stabbed into him. And so Vin is looking at this and she's like, 
again, we get to see the character's intelligence because she's like breaking him down and she's like, wait a second, all of the metal, it isn't to show his power. It's to hide that some of it is actually really important because he is a Farrakamo. Uh, he's a Farrakamo. That means, oh my God, he is not the hero of ages. This is not Link. This is Rashek. This is fucking Ganondorf the whole time. It was all a lie. Yeah, yeah. So we were slightly wrong. The epigraphs were not about... The Lord Ruler. Well, they were about the Lord Ruler, weirdly. About, they just weren't written by the Lord Ruler. Yes, because the Lord Ruler is actually the guy who hated him yeah. in his diary, who went and, like, murdered him and took the power for himself and has maybe been holding back the deepness this entire time and used that as a Yeah, we'll get into that in the epilogue. Um, um, so he, so Vin is like, okay, I'm just going to pull, and he's pushing, and everybody's in pain. Well, she notices Lord Ruler can pull the metals inside her body. Yes, And yes, she's yes, like, yes. what the fuck? That shouldn't be possible. Because he's a Farokamo Alamancer. Yeah. Farokamancer. Uh, and so she's like, maybe I too am a Farokamancer. And so she starts pulling on the bracelets, and they tug at each other and pull and pull and pull and pull, and then the bracelets rip free. And then, much like every time in every single piece of media where an old person has been using magic to stay young, he immediately disintegrates. Yeah. This is like the tropiest of tropes, but I love it every single time. It's always perfect. Yeah. The Mummy does this. Uh, Ghostbusters 2 does this. Yeah. It's yeah, so yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Slim Shady, sorry, Shim, wow, you can't fucking... Shim Slady. Shim Slady says, we called it, it was so obvious, nerdy being very correct and humble about the epigraphs. We were right, mostly. M mostly, kind of. We were mostly kind correct. Uh, Dorian Gray, it is a very Dorian Gray moment. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's great. Uh, the Lord Ruler is dead. Guess who called that? This guy. Kelsier was going to die, he was going to become a martyr, and the Lord Ruler would die, and the next book would be about Ellen and Vin having to deal with the surrounding dominances in the wake of the loss of the political structure. That is literally what I called. I don't know why I was so right. Granted, I also, I did say that Kelsier was going to kill the Lord Ruler, but like, he didn't. Uh, I was slightly wrong, but I was mostly right, and I don't know how I got this one so right. I feel uh, like a genius right now, even though I am not. I just got very, very lucky. No, you're honestly your arguments for it. Like there, we 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 talked about this at length. Yeah, and you presented your arguments, and you you were correct. Well, and I I like the idea of the Lord Ruler not really being the big bad of the series, just the big bad in this it's book. The, deep the deepness question mark. Yes, which I hope has another name because I don't really love the name the deepness. Why? It's not my favorite. It's a little goofy. Eh. The deepness. We're fighting the deepness. I don't know. It's I I, I don't know how I feel about the name. Mm -hmm. All right. You know what I mean? Sure. I, I, and it might grow on me. It's just not my favorite. It's not my favorite name of like an evil thing. Okay. It's it, it's almost too generic. It doesn't seem... I, I feel like people are generally better at describing things better, but like it just feels too like... Well, I think it's just uh, like... Depression. It would be like calling the bad thing in your world depression. And it's like... Well, a, but because it's more of like a concept as opposed to like a spear. But I don't you know think it's mean? just a concept, so I think there's something more going on there. And so I think that there's going to be a, a another name for it that we find out when they get to the Well of Ascension in book two. Mm -hmm. If they go, I'm assuming they go there. It's the name of well, the Well, it's called the Well of Ascension. So, yeah. There, yeah. Vin is probably like, I'm worried about what's going to happen. We need to go check out the fuck's going on here. There, yeah, there's going to be some issues mm -hmm. that they have to deal with that the Lord Ruler left behind. Yeah. And so Marsh, uh, Sazed runs in and, like, gives her medals to absorb before she die, uh, passes out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, the Lord Ruler uh, and Marsh and Sazed and Vin have this final conversation where he's like, you don't understand what I do for humanity. You've just sealed your own doom. Mm -hmm. And he's like, well, that's fucking ominous You fucked fuck. up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, then Vin just fucking takes a wooden spear and stabs him with it, and he's dead. Yep. Yep, uh, epilogue! We made it to the end of the book, y'all. Look at us go. Um, uh, Ellen is king. Yeah, Ellen is king? I'm not sure how that works. They, like, invented a monarchy over in the middle of the night? Well, they needed uh, they needed uh, someone at the top to, like, call the shots for now because otherwise shit never gets done. Sure, we've just never heard the word king be used before, and this world wasn't a monarchy before. And so it's, it's very interesting oh. to me that they, like... 
they invented the idea of a monarchy. Sazed probably is like, you're a king. And they're like, what does that mean? And he's like, well, in the olden days. I just, I, I found the term, he, he, what, like, they didn't call the Lord Ruler the king ever. And so it was interesting that the, he's not the Lord Ruler. Or the well, Lord, Ellen Lord, would or be like, no, the Mom. ruler, or no, yeah, but it's just like, where does king come from in this world? Maybe there were kings before the. the... Right, but what would that word mean to anybody? It's sort of like the idea of the dragon in um, in uh, Wheel of Time when because that's not a spoiler. It's from the first book where they see the banner and they're like, "What is that?" And like, "Oh, that's what people called a dragon." In, yeah, yeah. And but yeah. nobody understood what a dragon looked like. Calling him king here just kind of doesn't mean anything to anybody. And so I just found it. Uh, it was it was one of those weird things where like I, they called him King Ellen, and I was like, "Do the dominances have kings? Is this a word that means anything in this world?" Maybe to, Did like, you, I, say Zed, but, yeah, yeah to, to, like, maybe. the ska, maybe they have never heard the word king before. It was just one of those interesting thoughts where I was like, okay, yeah, sure, king, I guess. I, I, that I don't, sounds fancy. That, I don't know, I don't know how he gets coronated, but. Coron? Oh, oh. I've never heard that word before. Coronated, Yeah. I would assume that you get coronated at your coronation. Yeah. I've just never heard. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. That's <laughs> it's a weird word. Um, Ellen studied politics. King could easily be a word left over from pre-ascension. Oh, I, I totally Maybe, yeah. buy that there are people like Ellen and Sazed who would understand what that means. I just but wish the that the epilogue like... had included. Uh, and I King, don't sure. I don't actually wish this because it's not necessary at all. But for I would have found it very funny if people were like, What's a king? What what does that mean? <laughs> everyone's like, this is your new king, Ellen. And like, his name's King? Like, like the Fuhrer king, king Bradley? King Bradley, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, and they'd be like, no, like a king. So the idea of a king is that he's like the Lord Ruler, but he's not. It's, it's just like a different word. <laughs> They're like, this is what this means. This is what thing, how things are changing. Everybody attend the town hall. The renew stenographers are like have to that 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 copied the text for um, him are copying out the pamphlet over and over yes, again. Yes, yes. So that, they're putting out propaganda. Propaganda. Well, I, it just it, it it did stand out to me in a weird way because mm -hmm. I was like, these people haven't had a king, so they suddenly have a king. But like that, I, it, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm just crazy, but it was just one of those weird things that really popped for That's me right. reading the epilogue. Where I was like, did not like, didn't me, did not even think about it. Yeah, I was like, does that does that mean anything to these mm -hmm. people? Yeah. The other new word they'd have to learn would be regicide. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I guess so. Um, um, yeah, yeah, it was just, so, it, it was just, yeah, it was one of those weird moments where I was like, for a book that is so specific about the language of this world, mm -hmm. King stood out because it didn't feel of this world. Right, because we never yeah. heard it before. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's totally fair. I did not catch it, but that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, Ellen is going to be King. He's figuring shit out. He's trying to be a bridge between the Ska and the Nobleman. We skipped over one of the coolest ideas. The, the, oh my god my favorite thing about marsh being revealed to be an inquisitor mm -hmm. um is he the they're like the inquisitory the last thing the obligator saw was that the inquisitorious oh. uh is in charge of the church and the government and so marsh is like i'm the only inquisitor left in the city therefore i am the government now we don't I have to worry church. about the obligators because they fucking work for me and they saw the lord ruler say that Fucking so good. Yeah. So, like, what a brilliant yeah. way to tie all of the ending together. I yeah, was like, that's uh, such a cool moment. Yeah, and that was very well done. Yeah. Um. I Yes, I loved that. Yeah, it was awesome. I, I'm glad you brought that up, because, yeah, yeah that, that was fantastic. Yeah. Oh, so good. Uh, And so, yeah, they, um, they kind of have like a final conversation as they watch kind of the country come together in the distance. Uh, Ellen uh, is king, but Vin has not gone to him yet. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we kind of find out that the Chandra now works for Vin. Uh, and he has, says his contract was passed to her. He, he, yeah, so the Chandra has already been paid in Atium. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they're doing with Atium, but I'm really curious why Chandra would want it. Um yeah, because I don't think it's for money. I don't think Condra no. give a shit about money. No. And so I'm really curious what uh, I'm really curious what they do with Adium. 
Like if the, if absorbing adium makes them you intelligent or stronger, for some reason switch to adium instead of atium, and it's throwing me off. Didn't even notice I did that. <laughs> you said it like four times in a row, and I'm like, you've never called it. That. And so uh, it cuts to um, oh, says it says that Ellen's speech was great. He wishes that he could have heard it, so that he could have recorded, or he wishes he had had copper mines so that he could have recorded it. Maybe atium is how mistreats reproduce. It's the only way that they can like not like have. Ki- kids because they're not like sentient yet but like either like make a mystery sentient or like birth a new one shafika says there also wasn't any in the vault oh my god oh fuck wait a second oh do you think the mystery chandra went and took the all the atm no 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 but it's worse than that oh okay okay okay, okay. what if the atm keeping the atm away from the mists is what was keeping the deepness at bay and the chandra having the atm because because in in the in the epigraphs the mist rates are attacking people but they aren't now oh so what if the mists are the deepness but the mists are docile because the lord ruler was keeping them docile and not from killing people but they can't but 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 the mists like like vin you pulls on the mists she like you. Yes, because it. the Alamancy came when the Alamancy started when the Lord Ruler tamed the deepness. And when the mist started. So the Alamancy mist... comes from the deepness, but the deepness has been fucking mellowed, and it, the Chandra uses the Atium to reignite the deepness. What if that Atium reservoir is what turns the deepness back on, and now they have to fight the deepness because it is full steam ahead deepness again? So then what would have changed that would make the mist wraiths, like, attack people a thousand years ago? We don't know. We'll but find out wait, in the wait, Wall of Ascension. Did they, did they have the mists a thousand years ago? Because it feels like the mists showed up no, when the, the Lord Ruler the took over. No, but the deepness was this expanding force that was taking land. Mm-hmm. So maybe the mists were expanding, but they were violent. And so they called that the deepness. But and the when Lord the mists, Ruler kept the mists from being violent? They Yes, he, he somehow, whatever he did in the Well of Ascension is keeping the mists from being aggressive. And so without him there to keep the mists from being aggressive, the mist rates and the chandra and things become violent again. So do you think that maybe the mist rates before they have sentience are like controlled by the deepness? Or do you think that the Chandra who was working for Kelsier is also on the side of the deepness? I have no idea. So that he could steal the AT. But I think I think that this is the I think that this is the line well, of but, thinking that we should be going. Yeah, around. because there has to be a connection. There's no reason mm-hmm. that a person being attacked by the mists would have been mentioned if it wasn't relevant. Yes, 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 yes. And the fear of the mists has to come from somewhere. Yes. And I don't think it's just that the mist rates look fucking weird. I think it is genuinely that the deepness and the mists are the same thing, but yeah, I don't know. People were being mist taken. That's very funny. But I love that Roger Lai's comment got uh, deleted when it was just a funny joke. I mean, it, yeah. I'm glad you caught that one before it got deleted because that was funny. Well, uh, yeah, I yeah. People we, were being we, mist taken. We err on the side of caution here. Yeah. If your comment gets deleted and you're like, don't 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 worry, we're doing our best. Taken. That's doing our best. Um, all right, so then Ellen uh, is sitting at his desk, and Vin is watching him through the broken skylight. Uh, and she's like, nah, I can't do this. And then as she turns away, she remembers that Reen did not actually leave her, and that he was wrong. And his voice whispers yeah. to her go to, him. to go back. And so she does, and they hug, and it ends on an a, a awesome, awesome hug, where she's like, this is all I ever wanted, was for people to like me. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted a little bit of kindness in my life and a hot, rich boyfriend who's the king of the country. Yeah! Super easy. Oh, I just can't wait to be queen. It, it, yeah. It really sold the whole Vin and Ellen's relationship for me because it does feel very juvenile throughout the series in a way that totally makes sense because Vin is 16 slash 17 and, and he's like 20. Like, you know, like it felt like, you know, me as a teenager being like, I like this boy. And this like really makes the relationship yeah. feel more than that more you know more than just like a teenage um dream uh <laughs> hang on so that's the first book of miss we did it we finished a brandy sandy 
It's like somewhere between a 9.5 and a 10 for me. This book rocked. Yeah. It was very, very good. Yeah. Uh, the action sequences are some of the best I've ever read. Uh, some of the yeah. characters are some of my favorites. I will die for Vin. Yeah. Um, I get confused a lot during action sequences, and this was written in a way that I found easy to follow, but also not, like, incredibly detailed and um, uh, creative. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I think this book is wonderful. Um, I am so excited to keep reading the series. I, I love that uh, the Lord Ruler's dead, and so, like, the second book gets to be a... Um, it gets to be a new thing like we're going to see an expansion of this world i'm assuming we're going to get to learn a lot about the other dominances as this like book yeah. series moves outside of really being focused on phyllis and lufidel and the caves uh, i think we're going to start to learn about maybe, the other dominances and maybe the further away from the lord ruler the more unruly the myths are and the rumors about the myths like hurting people come from the further maybe. dominances it's possible because like people do actually mm. get like attacked occasionally yeah, we'll, we'll find out, right? Um, I'm, I'm so excited. Uh, we're going to do high-low. So the way that we do this is that Clarice does her high, I do my low, she does her low, I do my high. We compliment Sandwich this bitch because when I was a kid, and we would sit around the table uh, and uh, celebrate each other's highs, commiserate over each other's lows to take my blended family from being a blended family to a united family. Uh, Clarice, what's uh, your high for this final section of the final empire? I think the moment that made me go Holy shit. I have so many There's highs. There's so many highs in the interior. I know. There, there are, like, truly so many. This whole ending section is really a high. But the one that I did not see coming, like, that threw me for a loop was Marsh coming back. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that, good moment. Like, that, that, I was like, what? That, that made me lose it a little bit. Marsh being like, oh, I actually was too good. Yeah. yeah. They turned Love me into it. an Inquisitor. Like, very cool. It is very difficult to pick just one high, um, but I think that one got the biggest reaction. Yeah, out of me. I agree. So yeah, what's your low? Uh, just the I've said it. I, I I feel like it's a little bit Deus Ex Machina y, and I just think that it could have been written out in a way that wouldn't have made it. The same things could have happened, but described in a way that wouldn't have made it feel so. And then the door opens, and the guy comes in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and that's it. it. It's not a huge complaint. Um, it's a minor thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, but. Uh, it does. It just kind of says it, Ellen, and then Marsh back to back to back to me was a bit much. Yeah, that 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 is fair. My low is <laughs> fuck. I don't know. Um, my low is that the Lord Ruler got off easy. <laughs> I don't know that he did. I, I th hey, look, a thousand years of oppression, and you just... Mm, I, I don't know. I'm trying to come up with something that's not... I, I, I actually... I don't know that I agree with that. I think that the Lord Ruler weirdly had a miserable existence. And... Maybe. I... I'm... Yeah, I, I think that, like, the his determination to do the right thing in his mind... It made was never every, the right thing. No, no, in his mind... I'm not saying it was the right thing. I'm saying in his, the way that he viewed it. I think that it led to a lonely and miserable existence that was a waste of a life. And I Maybe. I think that he died not even realizing that, yes, he brought so much pain to so many other people, but I I don't think that he got to enjoy any of it. And what a, what a, what a waste. Well, you know, what, what an, you know, I, I don't think that more pain or torture or like a worse death would have been worse than the fact that he spent a thousand years wasting the gift of life and and having all the power in the world and not being able to enjoy anything at all. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I was trying to come up with something. What's your high? <laughs> um, I, I like this. Nicholas Reed says he lived for multiple lifetimes and didn't even have one meaningful life. I agree with that. My high is, oh, it's so tough. I, I think it's the Kelsier Inquisitor fight. I thought, like, that was, there, there's so many highs here, but that might have been my favorite, um, mm. chapter 34. Yeah. Uh, the lead up to Kelsier's death, um, the feeling of being so right, like, nailing it, like, that felt good to me. <laughs> yeah, fair. Uh, from, fair. like, a narcissistic point of view, I yeah. was like, oh, I get to, like, brag on book club, which is fun, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, so that, that, uh, but, but just the book. I mean, my high was the book. My, my high was getting to live in this world for... No, that's for... next week's book recap. No, I, I, I know. I, I hear you. I hear you. I just, I... I'm teasing, I'm teasing. 
It, it was what, can be anything in the world. Sitting on the plane with you Thursday as we were, like, getting close to the end of the book. Uh, and just, like, looking over at each other and just, like, ma- we weren't even saying anything, but just, like, making eyes of, like, how good is this? <laughs> we were sitting there being like... Right? We're just sitting there being like, oh, this fucking book, right? Yeah. And, like, that experience is why I love reading. Is those moments where... And I, I had that in Shadow Rising, too, where I would be downstairs screaming at you, like, babe, are you at this point yet? Like, that, that's what I love about this book club, is getting to sit here with you guys and be like, what a, what a world we got to go to. What, what a journey we were taking on. Yeah. Like, you know, Luthadel's a nightmare, and yet there's a part of me that wishes I could go there and meet these people because I love them, you know? I, I care so deeply about them. And, you know, is it concerning that I sometimes care more about fictional characters than real ones? Yes. But I, I, I think there's just something gorgeous about a story like this that just makes human beings who don't exist feel like family. And... That that I that's how I care about this crew, right? And it um it was a magical experience the whole way through, and that was my high, really. Yeah, fair. Is that like I have to be like I have to preface with like I have to bring up some things I don't love about the book because I love it so much. I don't want you to feel like I'm just like, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't want the show to feel fake. Oh, because fair. we're just s- slobbering on it. But at the same time, like I loved this book yeah. in a way that like I haven't like I haven't felt about a lot of reading in a while. Um. I don't know that there's a lot of books I've read that I love as much as this. Yeah. Experience was, right? Yeah. I, I don't think there is any Wheel of Time book that I love all the way through the way that I love this one. And, right, from like top to bottom. And so, I don't know. This was just, the, that was my high. My high was just the experience of it. Yeah. Um, I, I get why people special. love it. Yeah. Like, I, I, I feel like I totally understand. And I feel like I have been kind of, in the same way that we were with Wheel of Time, I feel like we have been kind of brought into a family of like, You've got your inside jokes. Oh, it's the Sanderlanch. You yeah, know? Like, yeah. now you get these things. You understand references. And, um, uh, you know, we, we've, we've got an incredibly solid community here. Um, yeah. And, like, f- just it feels like strengthening that community by, like, adding more things that we can enjoy together is a wonderful experience. So, yeah. thank you. I Yeah, like, people are like, well, maybe we'll do something else. Not, next week will be the full book recap. Uh, so the questions channel will be open. Um, we can open that now. Yeah, the mods like. the mods will clean up your questions. So don't put spoilers in there. You can if you if you go too hard on the spoilers in there, we, you might get banned from the Discord, guys. Uh, don't make just don't make our mods work too hard. Yeah. Um, and so uh, there's gonna be it's gonna be cool. Uh, we're gonna just talk through the book, talk through your questions. Mm-hmm. No leading questions for the next book. Uh, make it mostly favorites, and you know, like, what do you think of this or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, um. Uh, then the week after that we're going to start Will of Ascension I know that people are talking about short stories and stuff I don't I want to I, I, I don't want to slow down on this I want to read the next book so we're not going to do that we're going to start Well of Ascension in two weeks because yeah, yeah. I have to start Well of Ascension in two weeks because I need to I need to start the next book I'm too yeah. excited to like wait yeah. I'm so sorry I don't want to wait more I don't want to wait three weeks to start a new book No, fair so fair. we're going to start Well of Ascension the yes. Sunday after next bo- next Sunday after book club. If you are going to put questions in the chat, um, I believe I Discord. remember, or sorry, in the Discord, please put each question as an individual message. Yes, don't. So that if yeah. one of them is a bit spoilery, they can just delete that one and be like, hey, can you reword that or whatever yeah. it is. So everyone can have up to three questions each. And keep make them separate um, comments so that we can mod them easier. You know, make things as easy for our wonderful mods as possible. Thank you guys so much. Um, you're doing an incredible job. Yeah, like, and you have a limit of three questions. So come up with your three best questions. Three best questions. I am fiending for Mistborn Fix. You are right, Chimps Lady. Yes. Yeah, um, pretty, pretty much, yeah. Yeah. If just finish it, then lie about reading it. No, I can't do that. I, I take this too seriously. No, it, yeah, that would that would be weird. Also, that would it be would ru- way too much work of trying to pretend. Well, and here's the thing. It, this It would actually ruin book club for me. Yeah. Because the, the thing that I learned while we were doing The Inheritance is that I didn't enjoy it until we were doing Murtag. Yes, because we because didn't know what came next. We didn't know what came next. Uh, and so I, I actually did not enjoy covering a book that I'd already read before. And so I don't want to put myself in that position to not enjoy this again. Because it's this is the, these three hours are some of my favorite of the week, right? And so, um, 
I, I don't want to ruin it from my experience of book club because I, I love doing book club. Like this is the this is this and Dragonlance are the two things. Friday Saturday for me are the things I'm looking forward to every week right now because I just want to do book club with you guys and then play Dungeons and Dragons tomorrow. Uh, Dungeons and Dragons tomorrow, eleven uh, one at one p.m. will be live yes. with session two. Yeah, come hang out for that. please come watch. Um, but yeah, I'm not going to ruin the experience for myself. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I hear you. Because then I can't predict. Because if I get no, I I would hate it. If I, I got it would hate right, it. I couldn't have. I could not enjoy being right because I would know it's a lie. Yeah. And if I know it's a lie, then I can't enjoy it. It's no fun. Like honestly, yeah. like that sounds incredibly boring and way too much work. You yeah, because then I mean? I'm because then I just am like a braggadocious asshole for nothing. <laughs> yeah, you get to be yeah. a braggadocious asshole when you're right for good reason. Yeah. But not if it's for no good reason. There's a reason why we tend to start shows. And I understand, like, with Attack on Titan, people got mad at me for spoiling for you um, in the episode one. Well, because in episode one of that, I said, like, oh, we always start with everything that we know about something that's existed for a while. And you were like... And I said what I believed about the world. I didn't know that that show was as much of a mystery show, so I didn't know that it mattered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, And I, I was wrong. But I was close to being right. And... But we start with the things that we know so that the audience is aware of our predictions and stuff so that the game of it is fun. Yeah, yeah. To lie about that would just remove any enjoyment I get out of the content that no, we make. I, that would and it would kill fun. it for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Dinan asks, if we, in, does the D&D need some 3D printed terrain to play on? Look, I mean, I'll never say no. Look, we'll never say no to that kind of thing. However, we do play on like a television screen. We don't have a physical set. If someday we ever upgrade to a physical just set, just gotta say if you want to send stuff to the PO box, I'm not gonna say no. We'll never I say will, no. The here, PO here's, box. Here's is what this. I promise you: if you send something to PO box, it will end up on the show. Yeah. I will use it at some point. Yeah, yeah, that is incredible. The question channel seems ready. Thank you, Arzu. Thank you, guys, so freaking much. Like truly. Love that nerdy was right about this book, and he was right about Cat Swain, and I'm right about the fucking letters. Okay. This is only one of the letters. Oh my god. Look at what you've done. This is the letter. I have it in my hands. And I was right about it. It is one of... I was right about this letter. Okay? <laughs> Again, Giovanni, Whatever thank you for this incredible means. package. It was uh-huh. uh, such an incredible gift. Uh-huh. Um, tru- truly, truly an unbelievable gift. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That. Yeah. Reading that was... Yeah, so here's here's the deal, Very guys. Special. Um, Very special. This podcast is brought to you by MissyMountGaming.com. You guys know the deal. Go get your dice and tabletop RPG accoutrement over there. Use code NerdyNightly15 to get 15% off that order. Uh, do all the things. We're going to head out because we got to get to Osteo for uh, Clarus's body's broken, and so we have to put it back together. Pretty you, much. you guys actually can't see it, but she doesn't have legs right now. I'm a streamer. Uh, yeah. yeah. She is um, just a butt and then air. So our osteopath is going to screw her legs back in yeah, uh, yeah, so yeah. that she can walk. Um, unfortunately, I do have to carry her to uh, all the way to downtown yeah. Toronto. Streamers don't have legs. So, um, so I just need some extra time to do that. Mm-hmm. We're going to head out of here. But thank you so much for an incredible book club. This was an amazing book. Uh, I cannot wait to get into more Cosmere with you all. Uh, we will be back next week with the full book recap. Full book recap. Uh, we might have some like tier lists. Ooh, maybe we'll do a like character tier list. If one already exists. Ooh. Or we could have somebody, like, just add the characters in for us to move. Yeah, I'd be worried about them. Be th- if, if someone who knows the series can find us a tier list that doesn't have any spoilers in it, mm. I would really appreciate that. Yeah, we Mind can. Seer, thank you for that super chat. John, thank you so much. John, I'm glad you're doing well, too, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you so you. much. I appreciate that. Um, Wow. What before, a way to end. Yeah. Before we get to before we get to Smut Corner. Yeah. Um, if you like the video, like and subscribe to the channel. If you don't, hit the dislike button. Leave mean comments down below because the algorithm got us hungry and we must feed her this week. That algorithm goddess is Cliss. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Honestly, honestly, that moment was one of my highs. Really? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think the I think the way in which she manipulates Vin in that scene is as entertaining as some of the fight scenes were. Yeah. It well, was because, so well done. Because you know she's also giving that information sh- so that so that Vin, like, to try and manipulate Vin into having to pay her off to keep her silent about, like, uh, whatever comes out of that encounter. Absolutely, Like, yeah. she is playing 4D chess. I hope she's not dead, because I don't think she is. Probably and not. I hope Cliss comes back, because I actually really thought, I, I liked that twist for her a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I would kind of like if she was a 
potential ally, potential enemy for King Elland, and he yeah. doesn't know whether he can trust her or not. Yeah, that is fair. Sort of like the reporter in The Expanse. I want her to fit into that kind of a role where you're not really sure what's going on with her. Yeah, 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 yeah. I hear you. Uh, yeah, so that's that. Uh, leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts on Spotify. We'll read those eventually. I need to remember to look for them. That's my bad. If you have let a re- re- put a review and I haven't read it, just shoot me a message and um, tell we'll, me about it. So yeah, that... we will read. Yeah, leave us a review, guys. Yeah, it, um, it, it helps us a lot. It is the only way to grow over on those platforms. So, But we, uh, but we, we, we have been doing well in the podcast feed, so... Um, uh, really thank you uh, to everyone who listens to it as a podcast. That mm-hmm. is so kind of you. Uh, if there's anything we can do to make that experience better, please let us know. Yeah. And uh, we're going to just keep chugging along with Cosmere. We'll see you tomorrow for Dragonlance. See you tomorrow at 1 p.m. Harvest, Cal, and Bannon are joined by their friend Teller, their new friend Teller, for mm-hmm. an adventure into uh, a fishing competition. Yeah. Right. Fish. And then uh, we're going to reenact a battle that happened a long time ago. <laughs> it's gonna be fun uh yeah see you tomorrow or see you in one second for smut corner hell yeah smut corner canada why fuck a mattress anywhere else Ding. lord bull thank you for that super chat <laughs> for clarissa's new legs thank you thank you i appreciate it uh, i'll use that and get myself a little like toe ring as decoration cute i like that uh i love a toe ring do you no never huh. one in my life uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, Clarus, where would you add smut into what is essentially just a never-ending battle sequence? Well, well, well. You know, I think the Inquisitors are like, uh, like a like a frat fraternity, and so you know the whole okay. the whole like indoctrination into the being an inquisitor is like first of all a really horrible like murder process but then afterwards they like fucking haze you and then they have an orgy there's and a then celebratory they have a, inquisitor orgy yeah celebratory inquisitor orgy that's why um, they're you know what marsh says that they're also tired or car says they're also tired they wear out because really fast. they wear out really fast but the yeah. truth is that uh the marsh induction orgy wore them out the night before well, so they're all just kind of wiped out their like senses are heightened all the time so maybe they're just always a why little bit we, hard why are we always having the villains have orgy Orgies in Smut Corner. It's like it's the fun. Nargs. It's the uh, the Trollocs. Yeah, nothing wrong with a good orgy, you know. That's true. But I think yeah, they're. It they're... doesn't help that the only woman on like the good side is seventeen, and so we just don't so want to play talking, with that. Yeah, we're not talking about that. That is off limits. But like you know, if they're always hard a little bit all the time because like the blood flow, that might wear them out faster than normal. So their hi- senses are heightened. That you know they've got spikes everywhere. There's actually oh a twelfth spike, but you don't want to know where that is. They all have Prince Alberts. Um... <laughs> Baron's Brush, welcome to the nerd table. Thank you for that. Let's go, Smart Corner. Um, yeah, so, uh, but Marsh's induction orgy ends with the Prince Albert so that he at least gets to enjoy the orgy because the recovery time, he can't use his penis for a while. Yeah, yeah. The healing process is going to take some time for, for, for that. So, they're like, no. Um, and also, here's the thing. The ska overthrow the final empire you know oh, they so many women get impregnated down. that night so many kids are yeah, about yeah. to be born in nine months yeah <laughs> about to be in nine, nine months. months nine months from that well baby boom technically this like is, closer to 10 these but are the that's boomers. the whole thing these um, are the boomers there's uh there's so many babies that are born yeah within like so many within the week of this so many babies are born yeah in, in nine, nine months, months later in yeah. nine months yeah it's it's crazy uh yeah yeah. Yeah. They're they're like they're like what we need to make sure we have enough food for everybody. Yeah. Uh, are well, it's good because female... Ellen is going to need eighteen years from now. Ellen might need an army. So that's true. Are there female inquisitors? Mm, I don't know that it's ever. I don't know that we ever find that out. Uh, so many named Vin and Kelsier. I don't think they would know Vin. I don't think Vin's name is out there. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. For although she did kill the Lord Ruler, so it, you yeah. Know. But she like is like don't tell anyone. She literally oh, tells says that not to tell anyone don't that she did tell that. Tell people. Don't. Like I don't know that anyone actually knows that she killed the Lord Ruler. Well, Ellen maybe is like yeah, it's Valette. I don't know if Ellen knows that she killed the Lord. That, I feel like he's gotta. I mean, maybe I don't know if they. I don't. I think we'll find out in the next book what people believe about that night. But right now, I don't know what I don't know what people know about that. Fair, because we Maybe never find out in this book. Ghost Kelsier came back and killed the Lord Ruler. 
Or that Marsh did. And that's why he's like the only Inquisitor left. Is because he's maybe. the one that overthrew. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe, or, or Sezed. Like, I, I don't know. And nobody knows what happened in the room except the three of them. This is not horny enough for Smut Corner. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, Ham goes back to his wife. And he has a great night. Fantastic night. Yeah, but a lot of baby Kelsiers. A lot of baby Kelsiers. Kelsier is the most popular name that year. Um, <clears throat> if you Google the most popular name from the year that you were born, if it's the year that the Lord Ruler in the Final Empire fell, it's yeah. definitely Kelsier. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyways. This is a hard book dad smut too. I'm like, I'm like really trying to think of a good spot. And there I just did isn't, great. Like it's mostly a battle. No, no, no. But like to add it into this book, like. Yeah. Vin, Vin kind of just like starts a fight and then it's just fight it's that night right yeah so the only smut to this add is that the inquisitors the had sex before and the ska had sex after smut corner yeah smut corner you're welcome although oh, I, man. I i i'm a firm believer that the inquisitors all have a prince albert <laughs> and that's our podcast see you guys next week with the full book recap for the final empire get your questions in we'll have a fun chat we'll see you next friday Bye. come tomorrow for dragonlance goodbye everybody